Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. This is episode 331. We have quite the packed episode for you guys. Besides all the Hero Clicks news that we got this week, the South Dakota State Tournament that was ran this weekend, we also have a very special studio guest. So, what are we waiting for? Howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy. <laughs> Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me in the studio, like always, is my nemesis co host, Simeon Bruce. What is going on, Simeon? Oh, yeah. Went in seventh seed and I left in eighth place. I had a heck of uh, a well, heck of a run. Ooh. Let's let's not spoil the uh, the state story. Oh, it's not a spoiler that I'm yet. not good at the game, Calder. That's just. Oh, well, it's fact. not a spoiler. It's You're a, right. It's a known then. fact. <laughs> but do you want to introduce our special guest? Because we're not alone in studio, quote unquote, in studio this week. So, Simeon, do you want to do the so, honors this week? After after weeks and of trial and error and. Uh, some camping shenanigans that I, I managed part, to get into. By the way, all on Just got back part. from camping today, actually. Um, I tried to pull a fast one over Calder, and I, I kind of got him. I kind of got him. So I'll give myself on a pat on, a pat on the back for that. Uh, but this week we have Stan Strakowski on the podcast. Or better known okay. as Stan Dup. Is that... Uh... Stan Dup. Yes, that was my unofficial name. Okay. <laughs> Facebook made me change that. <laughs> <laughs> it will do that to you sometimes. So, Stan, I reached out to you a while back, and I just decided to, after seeing countless posts of just singing your praises constantly throughout the Heroclix world, I'm sure like more than just the Heroclix world, but Heroclix is uh, the only place where I saw it because that's the only thing I look at. <laughs> after seeing all these posts, I finally reached out and was like, hey, I want some custom dice, and Stan hooked me up, and those are the ones that uh, Calder unboxed last week, uh, live on the recording that no one could physically see until uh, we right. posted pictures later. Um, absolutely amazing, I gotta say. I, lo- I I probably could like sound like a real brown noser here, but but seriously, like the little hats as pips, and the logo, and like everything just looked. Moy Caliente it was beautiful. It was awesome. Well, thank you. It was a uh, it was a fun design to work on. There's always uh, always looking forward to things that are a little outside of the box, you know. Right on. Yeah, and so uh, in talking to Stan, I found out that uh, he's not actually a current Hero Clicks player. But uh, Stan, tell me or tell us the listeners, uh, how did you get into Clicks originally, and then why did you end up leaving Clicks? So I guess way back in 2002, I went to Wizard World Philadelphia, and they were giving away these free Batman and Spider-Man things that I had no idea what they were. Took them home, kind of looked at them, was like, "Mm, I don't know what this is. And then my weekly gaming group uh, took note of them and were like, well, we we need to know more about this. So basically, that's what got us started way back in Infinity Challenge, and um, we went collecting you know full sets and playing every week just out of my house hanging out played all the way up through i think it was it's arkham arkham asylum is that the first i think that's the first set with cards um it was like and i think that's third or third set, yeah what's that i think uh the avengers and just league sets were the first ones with cards yes you are then... correct you are okay. correct um i think arkham is kind of where i jumped off so that that kind of sticks in my mind um I gotcha I think it was just the cards and the special powers that kind of did it for me. Uh, I really enjoyed the game, having everything on the dial. I didn't need, you know, after a while you memorize the the PAC. So that wasn't a big issue for us. Um, But once there were, you had to check everyone else's cards and and that kind of thing, that kind of did it for us. Um, I still love the sculpt, so I kind of stuck with collecting certain characters and and certain sculpts throughout, but I, you know, I haven't followed it as far as the meta okay for sure uh, right on. sculpts are what i got into the game 
like the only reason I got into the game was I wanted a bunch of statues and I had no space to put them. So I was like, Hey, mm-hmm. tiny statues that'll work. <laughs> so kind of talking about sculpts. No, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, when did you get into it? What's uh, that? So I, seeing? I'm much more recent than uh, most people in the hero clicks community. Uh, I didn't start until about 2015, um, it was right after the Flash set released, and it was right after the Flash set released, and then I actually, the first set I really bought into was Avengers Assemble, which was a really good sculpt, uh, sculpt set, but is, horrible is. commons, mm-hmm. uncommons, rares, in my opinion. I'm sure there's some people that enjoyed them, but I did not. Um, but yeah, if you, if you didn't like uh, when they started adding stuff to the cards, man... They really went haywire have, with some of the. Have we got stuff. a show for you for yeah. like some of the newer stuff? Oh man, you definitely got out at the right time because it did not get less complicated as far as the card system went. I mean, I still have all my old stuff, so it's fun to you know break it out and play every once in a while. But you know, it's a uh, you're dealing with uh, 15 defense and eight attack and you yeah, know, 43 clicks of health for every every figure. Oh yeah, <laughs> I don't miss those days. I don't miss the deep dial, and it's just sad when you get down there. You're like, look at me, come on, what is yeah. this? attack, come on, dude. Oh. So, yeah. Um, but the part of that is at least pretty consistent, or well, I think is pretty consistent in the how good they look, at least for figures, is sculpts. Do you have a certain favorite sculpts or just figures that you like to play more than other ones? Um, I think Fantastic Forces was a really good set for sculpts and paint. Uh, they had that issue with the uh, the the brown powers looking gray because the dials are printed funny. But uh, I think for sculpts, that was an excellent set. I loved the uh, Ghost Rider. And that's yes. the Danny Catch. Ah, it's one of my favorites. Yeah, Juggernaut was tinier back then. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, no two by two Juggernauts. Not in that. Not back in the day. <laughs> Sadly. Oh, no big colossals. But did you ever own like the Sentinel or like the, uh, I think Sinestro around that time? Or, like, oh, man. Really big figures. I, I, I lost count, um, but I think I have 42 Sentinels. I, I like went nuts and collected them for a while. Whoa. So I have an insane number of Sentinels. Uh, probably not the biggest collection out there. Um, but, you know, it's, it's fun. My, my big thing was to try and have a capture list that I would keep week in and week out where I would try and capture as many different figures and throw them on the list. So a that lot of times awesome. I would lose because I was always going for the capture, but I didn't care <laughs> that it was like a, you know, a, a victory for me if I captured somebody new. Oh yeah. I actually, yeah. I've lost many games <laughs> from trying to use golden age, cl- like capture ability uh, with modern figures lost a, a couple of games because I they just haven't aged very well and they did away with the capture ability so now like I have to reach like further and further back every year to get a capture ability figure nice uh, so the one thing that uh, kind of brings us full circle with hero clicks is uh, we require six-sided dice to play this game and as I said uh, I don't think there's a hero clicks page on Facebook that hasn't at least had one post with your name mentioned. Uh, just people always posting like their really sweet dice that they got. Um, so let's go into that. Uh, how did you get into? How did you get started making dice? So I don't remember what year it was, but it's been a while. Um, there was actually a group working with Chessex, and I don't know how to pronounce the guy's realm screen name. It's either Chi Rocker or Kai Rocker or something along those lines. Um, but he was working out a, a deal with Chessex to get like the lanterns and all made. And, and he had created these dice and unbeknownst to me, um, there were more than just the lanterns. So as I started collecting them, I was like, this is awesome. You know, I, I love it. As I started collecting more, I started asking for designs. I was like, Hey, can, can you do this for me? Um, kind of not realizing that, you know, they were just commissioning them. They weren't making them themselves. And I kept getting, no, no, I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that. Well, you know, me being me, um, I got frustrated and I was like, you know what? Forget this. I'm tired of asking other people. I'm going to make my own. Um, so I bought a tiny CNC machine and 
you know, went to town trying to figure out the, the digital work in Photoshop and getting it to translate into CNC, you know, carvings and all with the tiny little drill bits. And that was a colossal train wreck. Um, I think I only made five or six pairs maybe. Um, and it was Harley Quinn and the Defender symbols. And there was an issue with one of the motors and whatnot. So they could look kind of wonky and they're really honestly, by today's standards, they're terrible. Um, and so I apologize to whoever actually bought those sets, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I still have the first pair I made in a box, um, you know, behind the, on a shelf in my nerd cave. And, uh, so that, I, that was the start of it. And I said, you know what? I wonder if a laser engraver would do better. So I, you know, bought this tiny little laser engraver, um, and I was like, all right, let's give it a shot. And it was just downhill from there because I realized once I got the, you know, software down, I could make any design I wanted. So then it started, you know, making two, three new designs a week and just going nuts and staying up all hours of the night. And, you know, because I still have a full time job. Um, and that was really the beginning of it. And I've, you know, upgraded lasers twice and, and then, you know, just full speed ahead. Yeah, you definitely can tell that there's, the sky's kind of the limit on what some of your uh, designs can be because there's definitely some crazy ones out there. Um, ours was definitely a, a commission job, but uh, you do have what would we call it like a, not necessarily like a collection, but you have kind of like a, a static like uh, set that you'll make like certain ones and offer them like non-commission, like people can just buy the ones that you have already designed, right? Yeah, everything's made to order. Um, I do the engraving myself, and I have a little... Um, I have a miniatures painter, um, and I send them out to her, and she paints them up, sends them back. We can't really do more than that with COVID going on, but, you know, um, so it slowed down the process a little bit, but, uh, yeah, I do the Photoshop work and the engraving, and then I had the paintings that sent out because it got to be too much for me. I couldn't keep up. It was all hand-painted? Oh, hand painted. Um, oh, she uses a a tiny brush and tiny syringes and a magnifying glass. So, wow! Every one of those cowboy hat pips that you have was hand painted. <laughs> oh, it makes me feel oh so bad God. for yeah. for doing it, but uh, they look so good. <laughs> it's just the uh... yeah. I can't watch a western movie ever again. She's like, I've had it with John <laughs> Wayne. I don't, I don't care anymore. <laughs> Hateful eight. I hate the hateful freaking eight, man. I don't want to look at these cowboys anymore. That is insane. I, so, cause it's so small. I was like, it's gotta be some kind of machine. I don't think you're sitting there. Tiny hammer, tiny chisel. Right. Like no. so that makes sense. Like with the laser thing, you know, sorry, I'm, I'm a rancher at heart. I don't know much about technology. So when you're talking about computers and stuff, I'm like, yeah, I know how to press play and log on to my laptop. <laughs> so, it's that's just it blows my mind because I've seen machines like this work, but I'm like, how does he get the paint in there though? Like, is there some kind of like laser painter? The, the fact that it's hand painted is is just kind of like a beautiful, very uh, almost like artisanal, like crafty thing. I guess it's really cool to me that it's just individually hand painted with with such great care that I thought it was you know a machine doing it. So like, that is super impressive to me that each pair is hand painted. So that's that is awesome. A lot of people good. think we just kind of you know, shove them in a machine and the machine kind of shoots the paint at it. I don't know how that would work. It might work. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's challenging, I think, working up the images and trying to get them to work. Uh, being that I've never been a real digital, you know, artist kind of person, it, I've learned a lot throughout the years and I feel like I'm far better than I used to be. You know, you can definitely see an improvement over the years, um, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, it's they're all kind of made one at a time. And if I... If I have something that I've made in the past, you know, people can reach out to me and say, Hey, I'm looking for this. And I'm like, all right, let's, you know, most of them I can reproduce. Okay. But then there's some, there's some like, uh, I have a pair of, uh, Coolio and that's the only pair that exists because I think I'm the only one who wants them. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I call them my gangsta's paradise, <laughs> you know, Very nice. you know, I'm a dad and dad puns are awesome. <laughs> No, that is amazing. Paradise, but uh, that's <laughs> just is. because of my beard. So it's nothing to do with the fact that I listened to exclusively Weird Al for many years. But uh... that makes two of us. <laughs> All right. So I don't tell um, many people, but I've seen him in concert twice. So I don't know if it, 
if that makes my nerd cred go up or down. <laughs> it should go up. It should go up. He's yeah. awesome. Yeah, you definitely get credit for that. That's for sure. Uh, so we kind of got into your process um, between going from a CNC machine to a laser engraver. Uh, but uh, let's go a little bit more. Like, how do you get inspiration for, like, let's say, you know, you're just sitting at home and you just, how do you just think of what you want? Do you see something or how does it just pop in your head that you're like, that would look good on a paradise. So there's two different ways. Um, the, the number one way that happens nowadays is commission work. Honestly, it, a lot of it is really time consuming, even, you know, the Photoshop work and setting up the laser and all that other stuff. It, it, it's really time consuming. So if I get enough commissions, I don't have time to do images that I want. Um, and that's not a complaint. It's just, that's the, the, the way it is. Um, the other ones where if I have time and I can fit something in, usually it's from, you know, something I'm super passionate about. Um, so recently I did a pair of Panthro and, you know, that was my, one of my favorite characters growing up. Um, I was always like, you know, he's tough, but he's really smart. You know, I, I just loved Panther from the Thundercats. So once I figured out that how to make faces and actually put, you know, the, the full character on the dice, um, that was one of the ones I really wanted to do. And there is nothing that can drive you more than when you're passionate about something. So that was when I stayed up probably till like one, one thirty in the morning, trying to work up the image and get it to, to engrave properly that it would hold paint because you know, that my painter's amazing, but if my engraving work is terrible, there's nothing she can do about it. So, um, yeah, that's one of the things usually comes from my, my passions of, you know, either video games or, you know, old cartoons, you know, whatever. I'm into so many different things like that. Transformers, whatever. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm looking at that set right now. There's like, it's like a black metallic with like a silvery kind of shimmer to it. Uh, at least the one that you have so the image of. That, that set, the, the Panther I actually made in three different colors because he was never consistent um, in the cartoon. The, the colorist was, he was purple one day, gray the next, and blue a third day. So I have three different versions of that just kind of as a joke to myself. No one will probably ever pick them up, but, you know, at least I have, it amuses me. So, um, but the dice that those are on are actually, I recently reached out to a manufacturer to take one step back. Normally, I source my blanks from different companies all over the world. Okay, there's some in the UK, there's some in China, you know, whatever. There's several places where I have to go to get my blanks to work with. Um, but recently I reached out to a manufacturer directly and said, Hey, I have this idea for a dice design, a color that I'd like you to do, you know, black and silver swirl together and leave the one, you know, the, the six side blank. That way I can do my engraving and put my art on it. So that the dice that Panthro is on are actually, they're, they're not another company. They're, they're mine. Oh. So that, that was an accomplishment for me this year to, to take that next step and, and go one better. Yeah. That worked really well. I didn't know that. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, I guess I just I just kind of assumed that the color was like already, like that was already a dice color. But now that you say it, I guess I've never really even seen that kind of uh, combo anywhere before. So that makes sense. And you have to buy a pretty large quantity. So I wanted to go with something that was pretty neutral that would work with almost anything. So that was the the test color to see if I could you know pull it off. Absolutely. Yeah. Nice. So kind of been talking about how you make them and the entire just process that's been going. So for anyone interested in getting a pair of like custom dice done, like what are they looking at for just like a set of dice or if maybe they wanted like. So a single set, I typically yeah, do yourself, yeah. $20 for a single set, um, free shipping in the U.S. Um, if you want more in their single sided custom, since, you know, the, the pips come from the factory painted that way. Um it can come down to 15 if you buy enough pairs. Uh, but for the most part, you're looking at about 20. And then I usually do like a commission fee if there's something new that they're trying to, to, to get uh, to cover my Photoshop and, and set up with the engraver and cover all that time. Um, that can range anywhere from five to I think the highest one's been like 12. 
So it's only a couple bucks. But yeah, I mean, just reach out to me. I'm Nice Dice Customs on uh, Instagram. Facebook has that as well. Or Nice okay. Dice Customs right at gmail.com. So just drop me a message and I can do whatever. Consistent across the board. That's the way to be. Nice Dice Customs, Facebook, yep. Gmail, Instagram. Awesome. Yeah. So if anyone wants to get a hold of you, I'll, I'll make sure I link all those in the show notes of the podcast below. Cool. So you can easily get in touch with Stan here, guys. If you want to check out some of his work or get a uh, commission or something done. Most people contact me directly too. So that's fine. Okay. All right. So this is more of like a labor of love kind of thing. So, like, let's get to know you a little bit more. We'll move a little bit away from the dice. Uh, I know people, sure. People, in my opinion, if they're listening to this, they should really stop listening for a second and look you up on Facebook because I could just stare at, like, some of these designs all day. I already have, <laughs> like, several toolboxes full of dice that I never use because I, I still have, like, my favorite ones that I always reach for every time. But I do appreciate, like, all of the dice that I see. They're always new and interesting and uh stuff that i wish i had um but let's step away from the dice for a second and uh what so we'll just go in with uh we'll just i don't know how how to transition to this but we'll just say what do you do full-time when you're not uh being a dice master um <laughs> uh, i'm a chemist by trade um i work in pharma i used to do bench chemistry, but I, I don't need more. I've kind of moved over to the quality end of it. So, you know, that's, I think I've kind of been in the nerd category, no matter what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Whether you're getting paid or you're doing something for the fun of it. It's always, it's always nerd related. Very nice. Yep. Yep. Science, math, all that kind of stuff. I, you know, mm, you said the M word. So. Oh, oof, you just <laughs> gave me some flash, add flashbacks, but all right. <laughs> All right, and then uh, oh, right when, yeah. when you're like leisure time, so we've got we've got your hobbies with like uh, as well one of your hobbies, which is uh, making dice, and we've got your uh, your work experience. What what do you do to like relax? What's your uh, what's like your favorite games out right now? What's like a board game or card games? Like what do you enjoy doing in that realm? Um, I'm a big zombie person. I guess I, I can kind of say I was into it before it was cool when people used to make fun of me because zombies were lame. Um, so I'm big into Zombicide and uh, Dead of Winter. Run, Fight, or Die is another good one. Um, and Last Night on Earth is also one of my favorites. Uh, but I have to say, if I had to pick one game that I you know, would put at the top of the list would probably be the Battlestar Galactica game. Just because there's so much opportunity to you know, have a different outcome and mess with people. And it's a lot of fun. Are these all tabletop or? Yeah, these are all uh, somewhere between tabletop and board games kind of thing. Okay. Um, yeah. So they all have, you know, miniatures involved with them. And it's a lot of, uh, for the zombie games, it's a lot of survival. Can you, you know, survive through the mission and not get infected or, you know, whatever. Okay, cool. I have for, not uh, heard of I guess card, of those, for but... card games. Oh, really? Yeah. You got to I, try them out, man. They're so yeah, good. I've heard of Zombicide and, um, I've got a few games that I've actually been meaning to get somebody to play with me at some point, but, uh, currently in like so zombie side, you can play by yourself. Oh, okay. Yep. You can control two or three characters and just kind of go through the mission since they're the zombies are in an kind of an automated preset way that they move and act. So you don't have to really think to play for the zombies. It just kind of happens. So that game, if you know you're stuck home by yourself, just pick up that game, you know, put it on the table and, and go for it. The second version of it's coming out soon. The Kickstarter was last November, I think, and it's supposed to be streamlined. Nice. I've been meaning to back a few Kickstarters, but I guess yeah, that one would be good for me because uh, it's hard to get like a group together to play board games at any. At any. You can point just say right it's now. good to have friends. Okay. <laughs> yes, I was. I was trying to allude to it being something else. But okay. Yes. When you don't yeah, have friends, yeah. it's hard to play with anyone. <laughs> we'll blame it on 2020. Yeah, that's what I was trying to yeah. do, but Calder wouldn't let me get away with it. <laughs> Sorry. You got called out. <laughs> that, brutal, that brutal honesty, man. I can't help it. Uh, but all right, do you ever, like, are you a con-goer at all? When cons happen, 
Despotelis isn't running amok throughout the world? Are you like a big Gen Con Origins guy? Do you ever just go there, demo games all day, or check out like what other people make for dice and stuff? Or is it more like a business trip for you type of deal? Like, how um, does like going to game conventions or something like work for you? I absolutely love conventions. Um, there, I find that the comic and gaming community, I know others may disagree. Uh, but I find it to be very welcoming and open um, that you can just kind of sit down and demo a game and everyone seems to get along right off the bat. You know, they're, they're just you know, very welcoming. Um, so I love that feel. I've been to Gen Con twice or three times now. Um, and PAX Unplugged, I've been there twice. Um, it's just an absolute blast. I love it. The, con- the old Comic Cons were great, but the- these gaming conventions, once I found them, I'm like, this is my home. These are my people. <laughs> yeah, PAX Unplugged. Awesome. Uh, that was actually where uh, Worlds 2018 was held. And I really wish I hadn't been there for Heroclix because they had so many games going on that were just looked like infinitely more fun than competitive Heroclix. Uh, <laughs> which isn't, in my opinion, it's not hard to have a game that interests me more than high competitive level stuff. But yeah, there is a ton of stuff there and Philly's a cool city. So yeah, that's uh, that's only about 45 minutes from me. So, okay. Yeah. So it's not, that's kind of my go-to venue. If there's a convention, that's usually where I'm going. Yeah. That's not too bad of a drive. Uh, if it's closer, I had to fly in and then I had to reroute my plane ticket because I don't know how cities work, Um, (laughs) but that's a completely different story. So bringing it back to the dice, I guess uh, we mentioned a few with, uh, but uh, let's see what is one of like the dice that either is your proudest like creation or one that like took you the longest. What's one that like you just like when you finally got it like finished, you were just like really happy with the result. So recently, I think I kind of, brought things to kind of a new level when I figured out how to translate faces onto the dice. Um, it's definitely been a different style than I was used to. I always used to kind of focus on symbols or, you know, silhouettes or whatnot. But someone commissioned and kind of challenged me to uh, make the Booster Gold Blue Beetle set uh, where they're running away from an explosion. And it's just the two of their faces terrified. And... I have to say that that commission scared me to death. I was like, Oh, I have no idea how I'm going to do this or how it's going to translate. But yeah, I'm looking at that right right now. Let's, let's see what happens. So, um, I jumped in with both feet and I think it, I personally, you know, not to sound full of myself, but I feel like that turned out great. Um, and I feel like that was one of my most proud designs to date because I had no idea how I was going to make it happen. And I think I pulled it off. So, and it took me a very, very long time, like hours to do those faces, but uh, I'm happy with the result. So I would, I would have to say that's probably one of my proudest pairs. Yeah. You managed to convey a lot of emotion onto two dice with their faces. Uh, something that whiz kids has yet to manage with their sculpts, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, I can imagine, well, I can't really imagine because I don't know, I don't know how hard it would be, but it does look like it would be really difficult to get all the little nuances in the uh, expressions on there. Yeah, because I think what happens is if if you get it just wrong, they kind of look like they're wearing a mask, you know, or, uh, you know, like they have some sort of medical condition. (laughs) And (laughs) so I just, I, I... I feel like there, there's a you're walking a tightrope trying to get it right and still translate that it's a you know a real person. Yeah, I think you nailed that one for sure. Um, and again, I'm just thank you. I just uh, literally just searched your name on Facebook, and anyone can see these yeah. images when it pulls up. But there's several galleries. There's a lot of people that post their commissions when they get them in, um, all over Facebook, and a few of my old teammates actually recently got some so like they're popping up too there's stan is literally all over the place in the hero clicks community um which is i am shameless (laughs) (laughs) and it's a i mean it's uh it's not you self-promoting either there's i mean 
people can't stop uh, being happy with uh, what they get. And I, I don't blame them. There's, there's a lot of really cool stuff that you're doing with these. Yeah, but I would really implore people I probably should have said like disclaimer at the beginning of the episode to like go like have the Facebook or Instagram or something pulled up to look at these because like there's no shortage of like in between what you do we've kept it a lot of comic based stuff because Hero Clips is like the comic based game but like mm -hmm. there's, there's Pokemon dice these uh these Sesame Street Muppet dice I find hilarious <laughs> like there's there's so many and then like there's D&D &D sets that have you know special ones for, like the 20s and like whatever the highest one on the whatever dice it is for a D, D set is really cool too. So like it's more so, than just, you know, 2d six stuff, which is awesome. Those count dice with the pips that are like, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, that, those yeah. man, I was dying laughing, just cracking myself up as I came up with this idea. And I'm, I'm talking to my wife. I'm like, Oh, this is going to be the idea. This is going to be the best idea. It's just the dumbest joke, but I think it's, it's great. It's going to work so well. And she's just like, eyes glazed over doesn't she's so sick of hearing the uh, dice, right so uh, yeah. but i'm like no 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 no. there's tears running down my face you gotta you gotta see this when it's done I, that that pair was so much fun to work on yeah. <laughs> no that is awesome i you just tell like the passion you have for creating stuff is just beautiful like the oh dang no it's so funny like the cookies for cookie monster the ah 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 is you. hilarious that those are like the pips like, I just, I really, I love the creativity you got with some of this stuff. It's just beautiful. Um, all right, Simeon, do you want to kind of jump into uh, Community Tuesdays yet? Or what are you thinking? Yeah, let's go ahead and jump into Community Tuesdays. There are dozens of us. Dozens! All right, so each week we ask you guys a question every single Tuesday. Uh, for the most part, we get it there on time. Uh, this week... Very fitting because it's a very dice centric podcast. Basically, what is your favorite pair of dice that you own, Simeon? We we also implored you guys to drop a pick below so we could see uh, which ones you had. Uh, Simeon, what are your favorite pair of dice? Before we just jump into this, so I have two sets of dice that are uh, one has like sentimental value to me. Uh, my grandpa actually gave me a set of old stone gambler dice that he had like worn out pretty much and so a lot of the pips are either like worn or like cracked i use them as counters occasionally but i usually don't pull them out because i'm afraid to that like i'll just roll them one day and they'll hit the floor because i can't roll dice to, on the table very well and <laughs> i always imagine i'll like put one on the table and knock it off and it'll just like shatter and it'll just be gone into dust um but one of my favorite sets that i had before hero clicks it's just a weird like goldish color with a red like pentagram on it with like weird little supernatural kind of symbols. And I really like playing that when I'm playing like a mystical theme team. And I kind of try and make my dice match whatever my team is uh, for whatever reason. But yeah, that's my my usual go to if I'm playing like a mystical team. OK, right on. I used to have an old favorite pair of dice. And those are like the WizKids Earth X Captain America dice. Because Earth X is like one of my all time favorite Marvel stories. Cap is just awesome in that story. Big Captain America fan. But these, these new Dial H dice, maybe it's just because I really like that logo that we made. And and then the fact that all the hats are the pips uh, have definitely became my new favorite pair of dice. Like really, they are amazing. And the fact that now I know someone hand painted <laughs> every one of those uh blows my mind so i i absolutely like love those like to death so uh stan you probably mentioned yeah i think we've dice, asked but most yeah, probably a million favorites times. are but yeah. if you've got a, a third favorite set of dice that you want to show i have out. i have a pair um that's actually ones that uh, they're the gotham city sirens that that's kind of i love the, the bright green color um and i just love that book so it stinks that it went away, but you know, so that that's probably my go-to pair. If I can just pick one out and, and I can only have one. Nice. Simi, you want to read a uh, first couple of ones or the first answer on Facebook? Yeah. So on Facebook, we have Peter Marshfield who says, definitely got to be these, uh, just got them in a few days ago. And, uh, it's the Spider-Man, uh, I guess, cowl mask. Um, it's his actual a spider signal. Oh, so that's right. Yeah. Back in the day, they had the spidey signal to kind of, I guess, mimic the bat, the bat symbol. <laughs> yeah. um, so they would throw up this spidey signal, and I don't even remember who would 
put it up in the sky, but you know, Spidey would come swinging in and not have a clue what's going on. I have to talk to Lassie and figure out where Timmy was. I don't know. Um, but those are actually on another set of they're, they're on another set of blanks that I commissioned from the manufacturer with the you know half pearl blue, half red pearl. So those are actually unique to Nice Dice as well. Very cool. Yeah, uh, they're like split in half, so you'd have to go to our page to get an actual image of these. But the yeah, it's like a two tone dice kind of thing going on. Mm-hmm. And I actually I remember this now because back in the day I actually had this like really I don't know just awful toy for some reason it was like it was a toy to me but it was just a flashlight that barely ever worked and it had it would shine this like thing on the wall this image um so that's kind of funny because i just now remembered it but uh i'm sure it's destroyed by now the first answer on twitter is from little plastic superheroes he says the best pair of dice and he drops a picture of the i believe these are the war of light uh green lantern dice with the, the little lantern symbol the middle of them uh he also comments and says the worst pair of dice and uh they may or may not be the old dial h dice that had the logo on the uh on the one (laughs) instead of the six (laughs) yeah uh yes every crit miss reminds you of us all right we'll go next uh, (laughs) next up on facebook dylan disney says i can't pick a pair but it made my day when I was finally able to make a trade that completed this set. And he's got uh, the majority of the Rangers, uh, white, green, black, pink, blue, yellow, and red with their corresponding uh, animal spirit, I guess, dinosaur spirit, whatever it was, because green was like a dragon power or coins. something. Yeah, the, those little symbols. That was all the power coins that they used to put in their old belt. Oh, man, I had a set of those, too. Oh, no. Yeah, those uh, those dice are, are old. Those dice are old you know, collector's items at this point, I think they're not making them anymore. So that's pretty cool actually. Yeah. Uh, I really like the gold backdrop with the, uh, like the silhouette of the, um, I, I guess like just the silhouette of whatever it is, uh, T-Rex and saber tooth and all those. Yep. No, those are beautiful. Next up on Twitter, we got casual clicks and saying he's biased towards these great color scheme. X-Men logo is gravy, uh, blue dice, yellow pips with the, uh, normal like X-Men, logo a little circle with the x in it i don't know if these were the uh, uncanny x-men set or like what set these ones came with but uh, are they are cool. ones? i believe they're official whiz kids ones oh i think most of the ones on twitter that we got were official whiz kids i believe i like Some those X-Men ones too. okay yeah yeah i think uncanny x-men is that what you said that's what i thought but i don't remember the color scheme being very like blue for uncanny i think yeah i knew it was was more black and yellow for um xavier school i also didn't buy i'm not a big x-men guy so i didn't buy any of the dice and token packs that those came with so i don't really know the new x-men dice look like uh almost like biohazard symbols yeah i don't remember what those sets are for that's sets from we'll go next up on facebook john waters says had stan strakowski make me a set of his punisher custom dice and they have been amazing very happy with them so go ahead and describe yeah. these ones since you were name dropped so, in this one so those um someone commissioned those from the punisher netflix series uh when the uh the punisher would go around and start you know taking out bad guys he would say one batch two batch you know as as he takes them out right so that's what they say on them. The one says one batch, the one says two batch. So if you get a crit hit, that's what it says. And then there's um, bullet hole pips for all the other sides. So that was a fun design. I like that one. Yeah. Those would have been even crazier to uh, paint, in my opinion. I don't know. I guess I'm not I'm not a real detailed painter, so I don't know how hard it would have been. But those, yeah, the bullet holes definitely would have been a challenge for me. That's for sure. I think anything with multiple colors is probably the hardest. Like, so the, the faces or the Pokemon with like a thousand colors on one little tiny body. Um, but I think the, uh, the lettering on that one was a challenge when we first did it to try and figure out how to make it work perfectly. On Twitter, we have Bonsai Tree and Sapling says, you know what you're in for when you see the double sixes and they just say uh, mayhem. So like purple dice, green pips, mayhem on the double six i don't know what that's a reference to but they do look cool maybe it's like a joke auto insurance commercial (laughs) maybe it looks like uh, 
mayhem like me. It That's looks great. like it could almost be like a WWE characters, like the I don't know they're uh, probably like their like name, but like their like logo because every WWE star ends up getting like a logo of their name or right. you know, like some sort of thing that you can tell. But yeah, I have no idea where those would have come from. Those don't look like they're definitely not. Wicked. Isn't the name of the band in the Muppets Electric Mayhem? It's more Muppet knowledge than I have in my right now. Ah, <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, you guys are not, probably like 10 years younger than me. <laughs> if it's not Snuffleupagus, <laughs> I, I'm not buying it. I don't know. <laughs> and then uh, last we'll do on Facebook, we've got Rick Ryan, who just posted a picture, but it's a really cool picture. And I'd like to see these in person because they look really interesting. Um it's got a Captain America shield on one side, and they almost look like mostly translucent. Those are star pips. With yeah, a star the pips pip. are all stars on those, and okay. that's on a translucent Ooh. light blue. Um, and actually, that blank was discontinued by the manufacturer, and I can't get them to make more. So uh, I think that one's probably you know going to fade into the past unless I can get a manufacturer to kind of match that Pantone and, and get me a big slew of them. That's beautiful. Yeah, you're gonna have to let me know when that stuff's back in stock. Any any Captain America dice? I'm kind of a sucker for so like, and those look great. I was like, ooh, that clearness. Mm. Yeah. If you so if you're a fan bag. of George Perez's art, you should, you should check out. Um, someone commissioned a uh, a set of Cap's face. Oh, kind of right on. Based on George Perez's kind of version of Cap, so that pair's floating around out there too. We okay, sick. Um, really quick, last one I will read on Twitter. Christian Bogan, super fan. He knows what's up. You say anything but the dial H dice, you're wrong. He's he's repping the old <laughs> ones. They are, he's like, and hashtag, I'd be wanting them new ones to show up, though. <laughs> hashtag the bet Chris, bet Chris, best crit miss you ever see. Goodness gracious. And then the howdy, howdy, dial H dice. Comments again. The buttes, and he's got a picture of the old dice. I, I love the... The enthusiasm from C. Bogan here. Always, always digging it. Yeah. But that'll bring community today. Just to see us. Buttes, baby. The buttes, as he says. Uh, that'll bring close to Community Tuesday's questions. I thank you guys so much for your answers. Simeon. <laughs> Let's uh, give Stan a moment to uh, plug anything he wants so... to plug. Uh, I don't think we asked this before, but is there any particular store that you would like to uh steer people towards other than like your your online stuff uh if they're like in your area or something like that is there any uh, like brick right and now i'm not stores? actually in any brick and mortar stores so um it's just me online my facebook presence um instagram like i said it's all nice dice customs um i have the gallery on the nice dice uh, dot blogspot dot com just to kind of host all my pictures that way people can peruse and kind of send me pictures of what they like so uh yeah, just check that stuff out. Um, keep an eye out for the poly sets, you know, the D&D style, D20, all the way down to D4 sets that I'm kind of working on perfecting now because they'll be coming around with a bunch of different options. And yeah, even if, you know, you just want to chat about dice, feel free to, to look me up and drop me a message. Well, that sounds fantastic, Stan. Thank you for being on. Uh, and thanks again for, uh, I guess I didn't really go into it, but Stan was amazing to work with keeping me like up to date on the progress and uh, everything like that. So uh, thank you just for overall, just, you know, helping me with the vision that I had, I guess, and uh, making it become very welcome. as great as it did. Cause it turned out way more amazing than I thought it was going to. Awesome. Yeah. You're very welcome. Um, thank you for having me on and uh, thanks for putting your faith in me with your design. It was, uh, it's always a pleasure. Oh, and after that time I do, I do it again in a heartbeat. <laughs> oh, right on <laughs> all right man what a guest that was awesome learning so much about how dice are made and all. it's almost like an episode of how it's made really but like audio format for how they make dice so uh anyways with the rest of the show guys we're gonna go ahead and jump into news and then we're gonna go do a rundown of our south dakota state's experience sound good so without further ado we have a lot of news to talk about this week so let's get into it Simeon, 
these kids posted an article that was all about why. So a little late, you know, that you maybe had too much speculation time, but they're like, oh, people are speculating. We got to <laughs> got to make a got to make an article about why, why the price, you know, the world's not falling, yeah. guys. Sky's not falling. Calm it, down. So they kind of go into wanted us to explain ourselves. So I guess we better write. So something I guess up we will. Uh, so, yeah, so, this is yeah. Uh, mostly pertaining to the House of X. I believe that's the the next release. Let's see. I've got the release schedule for the first couple quarters here. Uh, so it'll be Fantastic Four. It'll be House of X, then Fantastic Four, and then Wonder Woman, I believe. Um, and WWE in there somewhere. But yes, House of X is the, the main one that's been on people's minds uh, a little bit because, yeah, $2 price increase per booster, which equals $20 per brick and 40 per case. So kind of a price hike, kind of interesting. And we'll get into it. Uh, they say... Prepare for some amazing enhancements coming to Heroclix. So this is going to kind of explain, kind of give you some reasons as to why maybe that price increases there. Uh, they say for nearly 20 years, Heroclix has been the industry's leading pre-painted tabletop miniatures game. While we've constantly worked to keep the game fresh and increase the quality of the miniatures, House of X will showcase a combo of tested and new ways for us to improve the visual wow of game pieces simply wow. put these figures look fantastic it's not random and it's only the beginning we'll maintain and increase the visual impact across the line moving forward obviously the details matter we're fans too we get it you're probably wondering how are the figures going to look better check out some of the comparisons to older figures on the left so this is you'd have to click on this whiz kids link uh to see these before and after pictures, but they basically, they've got some commons from the XXS set. And then the after image is from this new set, uh, some figures from this unreleased new set. And so it looks like in this image, it's uh, Jubilee. I'm assuming Jean gray, maybe Marvel girl or like Rachel Summers or something. And then someone holding like a PDA or something. Cause I can't tell who that is. I'm pretty um, sure it's like just a, glowy fist i want to say maybe. it could be uh, yeah it's it's hard to tell from this angle and from not being able to like in like enlarge the image very well uh the Damn. first thing enhance. i notice computer enhance <laughs> sorry keep going yeah the first thing i notice uh is the bases rather than being the flat like switch click kind of looking base that we've like known for like so long now normal base that we've known forever yeah pretty much it's got like a different look to it. It almost looks like they're standing on like an elevated, like little ledge thing. And I don't know if that is anything to actually care about, but um, we'll continue because I'm sure they'll explain it here. There's a lot. Uh, yeah. Expressive poses. The first improvement may be subtle, but we're including more details that speak to the personality of the characters and giving them more expressive poses. Armor is partially transformed. Hope has energy effects radiating from her hands. Okay, that was Hope. Wow, you've never done a Hope that has energy effects radiating from her hands? Yeah. And, wow. But armor's partially transformed instead of being encased in armor. Wow. Uh, Wolverine has claws popped and is ready to pounce. You've never seen Never that done either. a Wolverine with claws popped, <laughs> ready to pounce before. Wow. Corsair is commanding the Star Jammers, as you can tell in his pose. Uh, and most of these he's, are He's commons. literally just pointing. Yeah, that's <laughs> okay. commanding. He, he's, okay. he's looking at he's, someone he's, and he's pointing a different sorry. direction. It's Angry Dad Corsair. Uh, that's the script. Uh, most of those are common figures, they say. So... Even if you're not getting the hardest to find figures, you're finding more dynamic and better equipped figures multiple times in every booster. We're also taking some of the splashy effects and increasing their frequency within the booster, like Nightcrawler bamfing out of a big cloud or someone having a huge Phoenix Force clear effect with them. We're not spoiling who yet. Uh, Mr. Sinister's cape is absolutely fabulous. Spoiler it, alert! No, it's not. It, it's not. It's so bad. It's so weird. I'm sure that's what it looks like in the comics now. I just haven't seen it. It doesn't uh, look like a cape, though. It looks like he's got half an egg on his back. Like cut well, they're the like long weird egg. medical or weird medical stripes. Uh, they're like a weird metal like 
things. I don't know things. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't look uh, fabulous, if that's the key phrase we're using. It says, uh, yeah, it's a fabulous cape, even compared to some pretty great capes we've done before. And then they show the Prime White Queen, the Chase Sinister, and I'm guessing the, the Uncommon Magneto from XXS compared to Corsair uh, Cypher. Is that right? And yeah, Cypher. Uh, the new Sinister from this new set. So yeah, I don't, I honestly don't see as like a whole lot of different expression because in the before image, they really picked like some good before images rather than picking like some of the worst sculpts they've ever done. Like Magneto has a big f- like flailing cape. He has a good cape. Effect. I would say his cape is better than Sinister's. Well, for like an uncommon, yeah, he's got a good uncommon, sculpt. Absolutely, yeah. uh, the prime white queen has like a weird I don't I never never understood this one but she has like an energy thing protruding from her foot and then coming out of her fist or maybe it's coming from her fist and going down to her foot I don't know but um also not a bad sculpt and then sinister's a little boring he's just like holding some object I'm sure it's like yeah that is, bad. that is bad sinister sculpt so though. uh keep going with the article though yeah uh they go in to increased scale by slightly slightly increasing the scale of our figures and cutting the detail in more deeply. It looks much better after painting. The large larger scale means bigger details for many characters. This means bigger belt buckles, cooler boots, more, dra- more dramatic knee pads. Uh, painting at our unit volume isn't a brush-only operation. In fact, most of the paint operations on the figures are spray operations and tiny details don't hold up well which i i agree we've noticed this over the years uh bigger heads give us more room to improve faces across the line since bigger eye sockets noses mouths and help eyes eyebrows and lips look better finally increasing the frequency of better paint techniques like washes and dry brush techniques will further enhance the impact of the figures you'll see the washes below but we'll explain them later and so all those things sound good uh, making the figures bigger you know they do uh, all sound good yeah like kind of like the rhino from earth x since he was a bigger sculpt you really noticed all the like little details that didn't get like lost like a lot of figures end up looking like a flat kind of blob but they continue improved definition and attention to detail consider corsair and apocalypse below and i will uh corsair has a bossy demeanor he's a bossy man uh there's tension in his stance his muscles look ripped in all caps <laughs> corsair look at that. that's a that's a true comic gold, only gold, dad bod gold. uh Peace. the fabric of his belt has realistic contours. Apocalypse is lunging with a dynamic whoosh on his fist. The muscles in his legs have great definition. His face looks old and weathered. This is skip like sounds that. like TMZ describing some celebrities they snap pictures of, honestly. Um, but anyhow, yeah. Uh, I'll say that Corsair for a common does look pretty good. I'm not I'm not buying the whole like him pointing is like some undiscovered stance that they've never used before i'm pretty sure we've had characters that point before but like if they do fix the face and they do like manage to put like expressions on sure apocalypse is wearing a bunch of armor so there's not a lot of definition but his leg does have definition to it and the whoosh effect is something that we've seen before so i'm not going to give him a ton of credit for that but it is cool that it's there i guess yeah it's just i mean makes it more dynamic like he's actually striking something they go on to the next two figures. Jean Grey's fabric has tension and wrinkles. Her muscles shone through the tight part of her outfit. Her gloves her appear to give the, her fingers added thickness, like real gloves do. Her focused demeanor makes you think she's using her telekinesis. Jubilee's facial expression is clearly pissed mom. Her boots, shirt, jacket, and cape all have texture and flow. Shogo on her back has personality. A kid. He's got a little. Uh, I didn't notice this. He has a little. Uh, what's the baby thing? Uh, pacifier in his mouth. That oh, is yeah. actually kind of cool. That is kind of neat. I do like that. Yeah, and it's it's hard for me to like zoom in on these, but uh, I can read like the expression on Jubilee's face, and it is quite angry, which is fun. Yeah. And, and some RB. Yeah, I don't know if Marvel Girl has a lot of muscle, but like you can see where like the fabric is kind of like folded over and stuff like that. So that's interesting. Yeah. Um, again, it's a uncommon uh, Marvel, and 
it looks like the Jubilee is a super rare, so uh, she's got Thanks, a little man. bit more going on anyhow. But yeah, I'll give them credit on these two. They look they look better than normal, and they do look bigger in this example. Refined technique. So if you're not a miniature painting hobbyist, you might be unfamiliar with the term wash and dry brush in this context. A wash is a low viscosity thin paint coat, often black, that flows into the deeper crevices of the figure, fabric, wrinkles, muscles, definition, details on pouches, hair, fur. It helps you show off the creases in Jubilee's jacket or how chiseled Corsair's abs are. They really like Can't Corsair. get away from Jeez. Corsair. <laughs> Whoever Guy, this has got it. Corsair was like, oh yeah, Corsair. Got, uh, like, some, <laughs> some Cyclops dad <laughs> issues. A dry brush is sort of the opposite of a wash. It highlights the raised surfaces with a lighter color, like the edge of a cyclone or energy effect, making Storm's weather effects look better, for example. Admittedly, if you don't look at these, imi- at the, these images of Chamber, Gambit, and Iceman, you'll see great looking clear effects that might have benefited from a dry brush in the future. This is the first step in a staircase of planned planned improvements. We'll update you with articles and photos of when those happen. We think you'll love it. Uh, Then they've got a picture of an ice man, a chamber and a gambit uh, with all with different effects. Iceman's effect is actually one of the cooler ones that Iceman's had. It's not nearly as cool as the super rare from uh, Uncanny, but Mm. it's still pretty cool as far as Iceman's go. Uh, They finished the article with, check out our photos to see the improvements for yourself. We love how they look on the tabletop. And this November, we hope to see them on a table near you. Pre-order through your FLGS here. Keep up with all the latest uh, by following them on social media. And so, yeah. Overall, uh, it's kind of one of those things for me where it's like, I'll believe it when I see it. Uh, okay. These images aren't really doing it for me because it's hard to get like a grasp of all the little details. I know when I picked up, again, this is like my favorite example, but the Rhino from Earth X is like a common. And when I first pulled one out of my booster, I was like, this guy has so much crazy detail for a common that it's ridiculous like that he is not re-sculpted in that set. Like he wasn't even, they didn't even like reuse like the body or anything for a different character. Um, so I believe that WizKids can definitely do some great sculpts. And I think making a larger figure that they can cut like deeper grooves into so that their painting techniques work better would definitely improve that. I just hope it doesn't look weird when like somebody's got really deep set eyes or something. I don't know. Okay. So with that in mind, now we know the price isn't just more expensive for price sake or you're getting a little more team up cards. Right. Uh, Does this change how much of the set you're going to buy? Is it at the same amount for you? Like, what do you think? Give me that thought, I guess, Simeon. This, uh, it's hard because this really makes me want to support WizKids by buying more of this set than I was planning. Any company that's willing to, like, come forward and be like, hey, here's, like, our reasons for, like, this. I mean, they didn't come right out and say this is why we're increasing the price, but that's effectively what the article meant to me. But any company that's willing to, like, come out and like tell you like yeah we realize like our sculpts can sometimes look wonky especially with the faces uh here's some steps that we're going to start taking with like these upcoming sets to fix this uh i really appreciate that and i think WizKids did a good job of kind of going over some of like the little nuances that they're working on because had they just implemented this and not said anything a few people might have noticed but I think as like a whole, the community probably wouldn't have really, they might've been like, why are these figures bigger? This doesn't make any sense. Now all these figures are bigger. And I mean, at least now we have a reason for that and we have something to look forward to. So uh, I'm probably going to buy a little bit more, but I'll have to see if there's actually figures that are like new. Cause again, I don't need like a 100th version of Jean Grey. So if she's like going to be the rare that I pull every time, I'm not going to be happy with it. Right. Um, as for me, uh, I was planning on buying zero of this set and I'm still going to buy none of it. Uh, Cause I only, it's here's the thing. 
it's still an X-Men set and it's still characters I don't care about. I'm sorry, X-Men fans, you can hate me and boo me all you want. Um, but it's still just characters I don't care about. Even if they're better looking characters I don't care about, still don't care about them. So same thing with every set. I'll pick up characters that make the soldier keyword fun or better to play. And then I'll grab the characters I actually do care about for X-Men, which I guess is probably just Nightcrawler so far. Uh, but we'll see. So yeah, that is that is the X-Men. Moving on, they showed off a lot of just generic pictures here, the upcoming stuff. So besides the improvements in X-Men, they also said the whole fact that team-ups are back. We got to see a team-up storm. We're not going to go into her today. We have enough to talk about. Uh, the next thing about House of X that honestly worries me more than it is cool is the fact that there are team boosters and they show uh the marauders and x-force and a few figures that would kind of be in the lineup with that so as far as sealed play goes i honestly don't like the fact that every booster is just a team you now i i think that kind of ruins the fun of sealed and hoping you can make a team with luck of the draw and everything i and it also kind of means you're going to get a lot of the same commons, uncommon figures. You know, how do generics work that aren't on a team? I assume there are also non-team boosters. If if every booster is a team booster, that sucks. If it's only a couple of boosters, like maybe there's one booster in the brick that's a team booster, I'm not going to be mad about that at all. Yeah. But also, like overall, it depends how it's implemented, I guess. Sorry, yeah. go for it. Uh my biggest concern is distribution. So if the if it's like worst case scenario for me is every booster is a team booster, which some people will be like, I actually like that. And that's fine. I understand why you might like that. But for me, it's if every booster is a team booster and let's say like the booster with a chase is like X-Men or whatever. And then there's a chase that's, you know, Marauders or X-Force that you want and for whatever reason, like your area just doesn't get that those like uh, bricks in, like they only get the ones with like the X Men team boosters or something. I don't know. Um, I guess that can happen in any set, but it just seems. I don't know. It's another thing I'll have to see how the implement works before I neg on it too hard because it on paper it doesn't seem like an awful idea, but if I buy two random packs and they're both like the marauder quote unquote like the marauder pack or quote unquote the x-force pack and so i get like two packs that are completely identical because they wanted to give me like a team booster like that's what we have fast forces and starters for um and I, yeah i like i like the one aspect of sealed is that i can play a weird janky mixture of characters uh if they're a theme team then i get like a bonus and i'm lucky i'm one of like the lucky people that managed to put a theme team together or i like had to drop like 25 points for my build and play like a 275 point team just to make like a theme team work um mm -hmm. but it's also it gives you that one chance to like really test out like weird synergies like you have like a shield agent and a hydra agent and you're like oh this actually works because i can use these TAs, even though it's not a theme team, I can use these TAs with like this uh, good range attack or whatever. And so if every booster is a team booster, then yeah, I'm, I'm not super excited for that. Okay, moving away from House of X, finally, we do get to learn about two new sets coming out. One is going to be the Wonder Woman 80th anniversary set. The other is Fantastic Four Future Foundation Jumping into Wonder Woman, we had a ton of sculpts. Let me just go through them really quickly. Some of these are really cool. So they all have that base. Is, I was about to say they all have the new base, but that's false. The new base is technically a starting narrow, gets wider at the top, which all of these are, except they follow the kind of the War of Light Green Lantern LE style, which is all the bases have a little bit of rubble or sidewalk or dirt or grass or something um, on the Pink Lantern Wonder Woman, I believe. Violet Lantern, excuse me. Star, she has Sapphire. The, or Sapphire. Well, I do whatever, man. Um, <laughs> but yeah, she has the uh, Lantern base. Now, we also see a green or some Green Lantern uh, lady that I've never seen before, like a kid. Who also, but they don't have the Green Lantern base for some reason. I don't know why. Um, but that's weird. Seems inconsistent unless that version of Wonder Woman is a chase. 
and only the chases will have really cool bases be because of the flight effect. But Ooh, that if that's be the well. case, then I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to it's say. It is interesting that here. one of them got that, but the Green Lanterns, a not flying, and B you could have put that just same flight on a sidewalk. On a sidewalk, yeah. But let me just jump into the figures we have here. We have a Harley Quinn. Wow, another Harley Quinn. Great. But she's like a Wonder Woman version of Harley Quinn. So that's at least new and cool. We have a Wonder Woman who's sort of just standing there with her lasso. We have a good sidekick Batman here doing a cool karate pose. We have a pink Wonder Woman hair with like she has scythes, little scythes or sickles for whatever reason. I don't know. We have a Wonder Woman just kind of leaping forward, more of a classic costume Wonder Woman with the uh, starry bloomer skirt type deal and the big uh, bird with the big wings for the chest. Uh, like I said, the new Green Lantern character that I have never seen before. I assume an Earth Green Lantern that's like a child. Uh, we see a cheetah. We see a potentially the really weird uh, Amazonian Perfluflius Prometheus, whatever her name is. It's P something. I don't. I don't know. Uh, super generic Superman, hands on his hips. Uh, I hate Superman. He's the worst. Had this Get past it a hundred times. But yeah, now, really, now you can tell he's standing somewhere because he has so dynamic. So dynamic. Um, then we see a another kind of like Amazonian chick just kind of leaning forward with the sword. And then, like we said, the star sapphire uh, Wonder Woman who looks cool. Also, uh, then in the next one, we got to see objects. Simeon, what do you think of these objects and how they're doing them? Uh, so not 100 percent perfect for me. Not gonna lie, like I think it's a great improvement yeah. over what the like the previous objects have been. Like, let's go with Mighty Thor for example. It's like a hammer in dirt is kind of it kind of makes sense. It's kind of thematic, but a sword in dirt, a spear in dirt, like all the objects just in dirt, exospecs just like sitting there. All the objects that are just like this thing is sitting on the ground. Uh, caps the Asgardian shield also just in dirt on the ground. Yeah. yeah, didn't ever like that, and it also made the swords super fragile because they had this tiny little like sword point where they were like sticking straight up from the ground, and there's not a great way to store those anyhow. So didn't really care for those. Um, these are a huge improvement. Like I'm not gonna lie, these, this is a uh, 100% at least improvement. I think they can do better, but I, I, it's definitely an improvement. Um, so here we've got shown a just a sword. I'm sure that it's like some sort of battle sword that somebody used. Maybe Wonder Woman herself. I'm I'll not assume the sure. God Killer sword. I think these are all the movie kind of ones, or at least based on the movie ones, right? Yeah, that would make a lot of sense because say that looks like a God Killer sword, but yeah, it's on. also got her. Uh, like armor, like suit of armor with like the golden wings and golden helmet thing. Um, and then, of course, the lasso. So I'm assuming the lasso will come with one Wonder Woman and then several will be able to have it equipped. Um, the one thing that I'll say that I really wish they would have done is back, all the way back when the uh, Bat Belt utility resource was a thing, they had suits, like they had the Robin suit, the suit of sorrows, uh, whatever the random generic Batman suit was, they had those suits like on this like display pedestal. So it was like a like you would put a, a suit on a mannequin, except it was clear. So it was just you know like the the little mask for Robin on like the head of the like clear mannequin, and then the suit over the rest of it like draped. That would have looked great for the suit of armor kind of thing that she has with the wings and the helmet. Um. Oh, we haven't even described what these are. So they're like translucent triangles or pyramids. Uh, they're kind of strange looking, but they're, yeah, they're just these translucent like pyramids that uh, the lasso is like draped over it. Like it's almost wrapped around it. The sword is just displayed on like one edge. And then the uh, helmet and wings are, the wings are on like either side of the pyramid and the helmet is on like the tip of the pyramid. So it's a good design in my opinion it makes these 100 yeah. percent less likely to be broken 
I think they'll actually survive, you know, like falling off on like a goblin goblin glider or just thinking uh, of the goblin glider in that stupid little effect of it flying yeah, through the air. How they connected oh. it just by the yep. tiniest of like tips that possible. Um, mm. Yeah. I, I had a lot of swords from the mighty Thor break. So there's a hundred times more likely that you'll break something from the mighty Thor than any of the accessories from oh, the yeah. set. Well, they call them accessories. These are equipments, of course. I don't know why they called them accessories, but... Um, and then, moving on, we're going to go into the uh, future foundation set. So, the first picture we see is the cool alternate versions. Uh, we got Doctor Doom as Doctor Strange type of deal. We got Sue Storm wearing a big fancy cape and headdress, or not really headdress, behind her headdress, with one invisible arm. Then we have, like, the thing, Doctor Doom armor but it's just like the torso bit in the mask but firing something from his hands even though he's not wearing like gauntlets I'm or whatever dr doom turned into the like a version of dr doom that turned into the thing because he's doing like a magic blast i'm assuming or oh, yeah, it's yeah johnny's fire i i don't know what any of these are from to be honest yeah i'm sure they're all like um, what if stories or something but yeah i have see, no idea what any of these are from but they're cool sculpts. I can yeah. say that much. It's unique. They're all unique. I'll give you that for sure. You know, it's not like, oh, I pulled the 18th Sue Storm like you do in this last set, which is fine because we haven't got them for a while. But since we're getting a set so close, uh, it's cool that we're getting unique versions. And then I'll also um, a heavier, I guess, what would you say this? Focus on Future Foundation for sure in this set because we see uh, oh, Future Foundation Sue, Future Foundation Doctor Doom, Future Foundation Redhead Kid kicking someone in the nuts, um, a few other uh, <laughs> sculpts worth of note here. He's got. Uh, I don't effect. know who a lot of these two guys. Like, he's got he's too. doing like hip level kick. As like it's like a child doing a hip he's, level kick with an effect, as if he were a WWE character or something. Yeah. Literally, it looks exactly like the Seth Rollins like stomp effect. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Makes totally. equals equal amounts of sense, but uh, yeah, it's so future foundation. The the coolest ones. I'll save this for last. So it evokes warm feelings of family. We have Mr. Fantastic, obviously. <laughs> we have Stu. We have Spider Man. I assume that's Johnny, who's sort of floating with the technology yeah. stuff. Okay, I'm assuming. Um, and we as have, well. like, oh, actually, that's Alex Power from the Power Pack. I'm not positive. A ton but. of kids. So we see the Moloids that we saw before. Uh, we see Herbie. We see like Artie, I guess. And we have like a mini Impossible Man child, or maybe that oh, is yeah. Impossible Man. I don't know. Um, then we see this other one with like a blue head with a bubble, maybe an Atlantean or something, so they can breathe. I yeah, don't know. Some sort of fish um, kid. Yeah, some kind of fish kid. And then Herbie is so cool. I love that we're finally getting like a Herbie in the game, which is great. Um, who is this guy? So I know him as awesome Android. Um, yeah, this he's is... clearly not. He's a more <laughs> civilized version. This is awesome. Andy, much uh, yes. different. Uh, so just like how dragon man went from being a foe to a friend, uh, there's a future foundation of, uh, dragon man. I don't know if he'll make it in the set, but he played a fairly big role in like the early Hickman run. Um, Awesome Andy is also like a because basically the Fantastic Four turned the Baxter building into a like school for gifted kids that <coughs> aren't mutants, <coughs> anything but mutants. Uh, so Ow. other than other than Artie, of course, uh, there's a few mutants. That Apparently, make I mean, Franklin is technically exceptions. a mutant, but uh, well, yeah, I'd say, but they, they turned it into like a school for intelligent kids, like super. Uh, whoa, the Foundation itself whoa, is like really whoa. smart kids. Mutants so, are uh, just as smart as white. Uh, never mind. Let's keep going. Yeah. Uh, mutants, be bad. Are, <laughs> mutants can be smart if that's their ability. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> so awesome. Andy is just like in weird teacher attire. So he's just like super buff teacher man with like yeah. tiny shorts and he's got like a chalkboard draped dope. over his neck. Um, it's a super fun sculpt. I think it's probably it's better cool. than Dad thing, the Earth X thing. Ooh. I think this is better than that one. Bang. Harsh. 
It's a little harsh, man. Uh, no, but I really like it. Um, so now that we talked about the sculpts for this set, I'm going to bring it back to new design philosophy, which is easy to pilot common figures. You promised that a long time ago. I mean, a long, like three years ago. So maybe now they'll actually have easy to pilot common figures. Who knows? Uh, alternate wind conditions. I really like the sound of that. And captains and sidekicks. Um, which does sound really cool. The captain sidekick mechanic is shown here on Sue Storm. She has right where, uh, I guess, secret identity would be. It says captain, and I'll assume whoever her sidekick is going to be will also have sidekick over it. Now, this is a cool mechanic, but much like cool and new mechanics WizKids does, they're bound to leave out figures who we think are actually perfect for literal captains and literal sidekicks. So, they don't make a Batman and Robin or a Captain America and Bucky. Like they have, they basically had failed the use of the Captain sidekick mechanic because I don't think of Invisible Woman and whatever her little sidekick kids. I don't really think of them when I think of sidekicks yeah, type of like, deal. Uh, so the iconic, uh, iconic one of a uh, Bucky and a missile headed somewhere when he gets stuck. Oh and right, okay. can't he was get a off, plane. and Captain America okay, just leaves him on it. Missile. Okay. Hey, the explosion <laughs> pushed him away. He wasn't able to jump on the plane. He was on the motorbike still. All right. Uh, I, I own so many Captain America comics. You know how many times they rehash? They they have him do a flashback and see that story again. I probably read them jumping on Baron Zemo's stupid fake plane. No, Bucky, you're stuck. Like a million times. That's why I was mad in the movie when it was literally just him getting like knocked out of a train. I was like, was like oh. This is how we're gonna write off Bucky, I guess. Yeah, I was like, would, would Cap really have been like, yeah, that probably killed him. He's not a very tough guy. I bet oh, that, they that say fall they just, sent you know. people out to look. They say they sent people out to look. I think later in the movie. Yeah, but, uh, it's still a really lazy write off from the MCU, I would say. Um, but anyways, to go on to Captain Sidekick, like it would have been perfect if they would have waited for the Captain America set afterwards, because then we could have had. The Captain Sidekick Captain America would have been like Sidekick Bucky Barnes, Sidekick Rick Jones, Sidekick D Man. Um, you know, then we have a U.S. agent who as Captain America who has a Sidekick as Bucky, but it's actually Battlestar. You know, like that would be cool. Um, so they really wasted the Sidekick Captain mechanic, unless they do that with a Captain America in the future, because Cap has had so many people sub in. For Bucky, same thing like how Batman has had like a million different Robins or Batgirls as his sidekicks. Those are the people that need this mechanic the most, obviously. Um, and other people sort of come to mind, I guess. Not really. Those are the big sidekicks. A a Tony Stark Iron Man with War Machine. I don't really think we think of War Machine as a sidekick, but maybe, you know, like that would be fine, I guess. Yeah. Like really, it's a, it's a cool mechanic. I can read her. I can all read her trait really quickly. We're not going to get into this too much, but once per turn, when a friendly sidekick is targeted by an attack, you may replace that sidekick's defense value with Invisible Woman's printed defense value. So this is weird because it doesn't necessarily have to be her actual sidekick. So if traits yeah. are worded this loosely, it means she can replace like moving uh, forward any value. Yeah. yeah, like moving forward. Yeah. So that's really weird. It's just anyone that is a sidekick has it above their uh, picture on the dial next to the set number. Just do it. Like now it's everybody is your sidekick. That's kind of weird. Well, and we I don't feel like really... it should be a sidekick that shares a keyword at the very least. But yeah, you would I think know. it would yeah, be like keyword, like named keyword based. That would make sense. Yeah. But uh, as far as just like some additional ability kind of stuff, I understand that and hopefully they cost them appropriately um if this sue has like an 18 or a 19 and the sidekicks are worth playing i think she'd be interesting we don't get to see any of her yeah. dial and we only see uh stealth sidestep and tk for powers um she's very mom sue or like teacher sue she's got like you are all grounded as flavor text so um I don't assume that she's going to be like a very attack heavy lady, but hopefully she has like a high defense to really boost her sidekicks. Yeah, absolutely. Going on into the rest of the information. So we see the official release schedule, which is House of X for December. Uh, the Future Foundation is going to be February 2021. Wonder Woman is going to be April 2021. Hopefully enough time for another DC set to also get made. Haha. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 
It's going to be so um, and then, sad. <laughs> as much as I'm looking forward to that Wonder Woman set, we have so many dub or so many uh I almost said Wonder Woman. We have so many DC sets that are like on the back burner, I imagine, like so many storylines that should be made at some point and they're just like waiting because DC is yeah. like only one per year and uh yeah, we have to abide by the law of DC, it so really hurts. DC Comics, what is your, you know, what's your problem, bro? Who, what's who wrong hurt with you, you? DC? Who, yeah, who hurt you? Hurt you because, it's, come on, we want to Kenny, buy this Kenny stuff. Said something dumb. It's all Kenny Pena's fault. He said something dumb, offended DC, and they were like, you know what? You get one set a year, Mister Pena. <laughs> it was like, yeah, well, I don't really care that much. Okay, no, it's like no, no skin off his teeth. But uh, the coolest news is. WWE Superstar Shakeup, which is basically going to be another uh, WWE ring pack. So super weird combo of years, by the way. Um, I guess that's the shakeup, right? So it's a WWE ring two-player starter set, and then it has additional superstar cues. So it's going to be forty bucks. You're going to get these four figures. It is going to be uh, Seth Rollins, yeah, 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 guy with yep. long hair, beard, shirtless. Uh, could be Drew McIntyre. Probably Seth Rollins, though. They're just so similar. Uh, so Seth Rollins, Becky Lynch, The Fiend, and Bailey. These are all characters, except for Seth Rollins. He's trash. Um, that I think all deserve another version of themselves more than just the one that they had. So even though this is like The Fiend, it would be cool if his dial played more like Bray Wyatt, Firefly Funhouse. That'd be really cool. Um, even though this is clearly the same sculpt as Bailey in her current sort of heel look, it would be great if she played more like the I'm a hugger type bailey and then you know becky lynch if it's going to be the man as her main version this is still her man look you could do the weird steampunk becky lynch or even like oh Women's yeah. revolution becky lynch would be fine too forgot seth rollins yes we could do monday night messiah as opposed to normal lame just awful trash character awful all around terrible human being seth rollins uh but whatever uh but the superstar shakeup is going to be cool i hope the ring does something different could obviously just be like all right wwe ring uh same stuff you know if they wanted to it seems I very mean, easy reprint. with these four characters it doesn't make sense for it to be anything other than the ring but i'm still gonna secretly hope that it's like a hell in a cell or uh, like elimination chamber or like some kind of like That's a big ask hell in a cell is a big ask simeon yeah it is a lot and it'd have to be like a very large but the msrp is ten dollars for more than the WWE right. ring was, I think. Wasn't it 30 or was it 35? What? It was like 30 or 35. So it is more. That's for sure. So if it is Hell in a Cell, that'd be great. You know, obviously. It'd be amazing. Moving on, we get some unpainted Fantastic Four. So, yeah, this is kind of what we all assumed, I guess. There wasn't a ton of speculation, but the Cosmic Clash starter set figures all had switch clicks. Everybody was like, why? <laughs> And it's the only reason WizKids is doing switch clicks anymore. They have a switch click addiction. They're like, we gotta make, we gotta make switch clicks, guys. They're like itching their arms. Like we can't do team bases. People didn't like team bases. They do switch clicks. They're like, ah, oh, we repaint figures. So this is them uh, repainting. They're gonna get bland, colorless gray or white versions of the Fantastic Four in January 2021. So you can sculpt swap them. But it's also, guess what? More Fantastic Four figures, another Doctor Doom figure, and another Silver Surfer figure. That you can get, paint them however you like. I don't know what other colors Silver Surfer has been, but if you want to paint them shiny gold or whatever, I don't know. Um, that's cool too. And yeah, like same thing with the Fantastic Four. They have a ton of different costumes, so and you can repaint them as you please. And of course, it's more dials. So for all you wife swap enthusiasts out there, mm. this is for you. Yes. No, Simeon's a wife swap enthusiast. Very much so. I'm, that's like my re main reason. Well, no, my main reason for buying into the the new Fantastic Four set, the Future Foundation set, is that the Jonathan Hickman run is pretty much the only Fantastic Four you ever need to read. It's like the, in my opinion, if you've never given Fantastic Four a shot, that's like the only shot you need to give it to be like, yeah, this was good. But that's the main reason I like all the characters from that uh, series. And I hope that we get some of like the iconic scenes, like uh, a Nihilus on a chain as Johnny Storm's pet would be really sweet. But yeah, unpainted miniatures are still a thing that I'm not super excited about.
They just don't don't really do it for me for some reason. Like I already have a painted version, and I'm not super excited to pay like eight bucks to do the work for them. So, right, we have a ton of more sculpts to get through. So I'm gonna try to get through these as well, so we can talk about states. Um, the booster, oh baby, the booster. It is also gonna be an object set, so we're gonna get two object sets. Uh, it's next year. I don't think we got two this year, right? It was just Spider-Man that had objects this year. So getting two object sets next year is going to be really cool. Fantastic Four is showing off the ultimate nullifier. This is also kind of using a new thing for bases. So the ultimate nullifier is on like an atomic or something symbol, I guess. Yeah. The cool. Silver Surfer's uh, surfboard is on this kind of billowy energy kind of cloudy looking stuff. Then on the booster, we see some kind of... Uh, cosmic pitchfork tuning fork <laughs> thing um but simeon i know you're a big fan of this guy so oh yeah what is, what is this we're looking at what, what's this oh, green there's we're... a green mist arising from the ground and atop is none other than diablo's potions so yeah diablo is one of my favorite fantastic four villains he's super cheesy and it doesn't really make sense that he's a like a good villain but uh he just has like these potions that always did kind of like the bat belt like one for every occasion he would just be like fire extinguisher <laughs> just like hit johnny storm with something that like turned off his fire for like 30 minutes or something and then he would be like uh no one can be invisible around me and throw a potion and sue storm would like stop being invisible or whatever like uh so i have no idea what these potions will do but he's just such a fun character that uh i'm excited for that and it looks like uh to go along with him, we'll probably get another sculpt of the awesome android. He's in the back there, along with uh, yeah, the wingless wizard and the mad thinker and some of those other uh, frightful four kind of guys. To keep in mind, the, this is comic art. And as we know, if we see them as comic art on the booster, it doesn't necessarily mean we get them in the set. Um, but I hope so. Diablo obviously confirmed wingless wizard maybe i really hope we get two awesome androids maybe awesome andy is the prime awesome android is captain america villain so i definitely want to get the normal version of him for sure um, but yeah what about the rest of these sculpts simeon who who stands out besides these color swapped dark mode versions yeah. of so like the stealth <laughs> mode future foundation so the yeah. the reason they've got like the spoiler alert the reason they've got the little like uh triple beehive kind of design no. on their outfit oh, yeah is because there's no longer four of them. It's uh, The Thing, Mr. Fantastic, and Sue Storm. Um, so that's why there's like three. The All right, let's yeah, so down. I don't remember the black version of the suits at all. So I apparently missed whenever that storyline happened. But, uh, I mean, if they're going to reuse the sculpt, at least it's like a complete opposite in tone. So that's kind of cool. Okay. Uh, we also get to see uh, making his return. This is like seven year, something like that. Maybe nine years return. We have a Utwa, the Watcher. I'm going to assume it's Ut Utwa. Um, I always called him but Watu, Watu, Watu. But Watu? Utwa. Comics, How yeah. am I? I don't. I don't think maybe it's, it's, it's ever probably been is Utwa said out loud, I, is it? I don't know, dude. So Marvel, uh, Marvel YouTube channel used to have a show. Um, the watcher and it's like uh you're watching the watcher but the watchers it was really cute theme song um the randolph lady rudolph she used to do it she was hilarious anyways um they probably said it's a watu it probably is and i'm utwa whatever i said is utwa. definitely wrong utu. that's probably wrong but anyways he's like normal sized i guess so he's very like on a single base yeah and normal he's still size using the subjective but yeah the, Right, he's still big, big old baby head guy, and yeah. also we could get generic watchers as well, which would be cool. Like, so if this like normal ish sculpt, yeah, is a generic watcher, that's fine. And then if it's and he has his eyes, eyes, so uh, yeah, the Nick Fury super rare. Several had several different yet. versions of the watcher in different comics don't have eyes. If we had an Earth X the watcher, oh, that'd be hot, man. I would love that. He's like all hooked up to a machine. He can't see anything. I would love an Earth yeah. X to watch. Her. He was such a scumbag in Earth X. Uh, and then a Silver Savage. Like this is since Mutations and Monsters, we haven't gotten a Silver Savage. Oh, yeah. So this is really cool. 
I still like, have mine. He's awesome. uh, up on display, but yeah, this one's like way better. Uh, he's got a like solid gold looking uh, shoulder armor, a very brass colored like mace. And then, of course, using his uh, surfboard as a shield. So it's a very unique design. And he definitely has the gladiatorial uh, control disc thing on his chest. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. And that is the news. I, like I said, guys, a ton of new stuff this week. So Sydney, is there anything you want to add before we move on? Not really. Um, I'm, I'm excited to start getting into the dials of Fantastic Four and getting some more spoilers and stuff. Uh, as much as I like the sculpts, I never trust the digital renderings, and I really want them to put the Watcher next to like another figure so I can get a sense of scale, because I I really hope that he's like bigger than like the thing, or at least I don't know, at least taller. He doesn't have to be bigger, but taller. Right. Yeah. He should. He should be a larger stature wise, at least. Right. Um. No, oh, I'm excited for the Fantastic Four set. Actually, he'll probably get a brick of. Fantastic Four and then cherry pick Wonder Woman just because the objects in Wonder Woman I probably won't care about too much unless I get like a specific team in mind. Um, but those are the new sets. Let's move into the States tournament. So South Dakota States was literally yesterday. So this Saturday, uh, we weren't able to play at a comic book store. It's just the way it be sometimes. So we had a little higher price increase to play at the I remember uh, the Sheraton Event Center in beautiful Sioux Falls, South Dakota, uh, in all right, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And we got to play. Everybody had to wear a mask. And even though uh, food was provided and we all like took them off anyways when we ate <laughs> and we were all in the same room, but whatever. Um, had to follow the hotel's um, rules and whatnot. But we had to pay 45 bucks instead of like the normal 30 or whatever it is for states. It was your average states with the the new map and everything. So it's 300 modern. Spider Man and Carnage was legal. Simeon, what did you play? How did you do? Don't really go into your games or anything. Maybe yeah. tell us about top eight. So I I ended up playing a very similar version to what I played in the charity event, which was the last time I actually built a team. So um, haven't really been building a lot of teams lately haven't been practicing a lot of teams and so i just went with something that i kind of knew and that is that fantastic four is good um i could have made it better but what i ended up playing was i ended up fielding the uncommon sue storm who's 50 points and she has the trait that lets me swap out so that's the only reason she was on the team uh i was never actually going to keep her on the field uh, i played the super rare thing who has the 19 defend perplex uh, he can use it to modify or attack value minus two instead of minus one, but otherwise it's just perplex on a 50 point figure. The 19 defend is great. The invincible is great. He comes with two bystanders that are autonomous, which is great. He's overall probably one of the bigger linchpins in the team. The second biggest linchpin and maybe the biggest is the rare, uh, Franklin Richards. Um, he's a rare, so he's not too expensive to pick up. And I would advise anyone that's even thinking about playing a uh, Fantastic Four theme team, unless it's purely for fun, which I do that as well. So uh, disregard in that case. But anyone that wants to play a Fantastic Four theme team and like any kind of competitive sense needs a Franklin on it because he gives everyone within four power cosmic, which is really cool. And that's worth it for itself for 65 points, but he's 11 clicks long and can pick three powers a turn. He has to damage himself, but he can heal in a couple ways. So it's actually, I mean, it's probably one of the best 65 point figures in the game right now. Um, not a lot of 65 point figures that I talk about though. So who knows what's out there? Uh, what else was on the team? That was main force. That was uh, Sue, super rare thing. Rare Franklin, Rare Thing, who gives me the Alicia Masters bystander, and then immediately he is swapped off at the beginning of the game. And the last was the Uncommon Valeria, which um, could be swapped out for Valeria Von Doom. So it was basically uh, every game started. I don't think I ever... No, I did put Valeria Von Doom in once, but otherwise it was Sue got swapped out for Black Leopard who is a prime that allows me to 
force my opponents to have bad stats. Uh, 10 attack, 17 damage, or 10 attack, 17 de- defense, and uh, 3 damage. It doesn't do anything to their range or speed, but I really don't need it to. Anyone within 6 and line of fire, that affects. Uh, and then the rare thing got swapped out for the super rare Wolverine, who is just really hard to keep off the map. So he once he would be KO'd, as long as you have Fantastic Four still on the field, which I always did, he just sits on the sideline for like three turns. It's You give him four tokens, but it's at the beginning of each turn you remove one, and then when you remove your last one, he goes back in. So it's I guess it's technically four turns. Um, so yeah, it was like it's a pretty solid team. Uh, no one can outwit you uh, unless they have some sort of special outwit power. And for the most part, as long as Black Leopard is like front and center and not getting his line of fire blocked, your opponents are swinging at like at minimum 19s with a 10 attack. Uh, but Black Leopard has like combat reflexes and a perplex, and you have a bunch of other perplexes on the team. So most of the time they're swinging at like 20s or 21s with a 10 attack, and then it just it works really effectively as like a tank team. That's what I played. I had two really challenging games, but one I got steamrolled, so I won't really talk about that one. I'll talk about the one I got when I got into top eight. I was the seventh seed which meant I went against the second seed. So that was Jonah, who I have faced multiple times in these uh, state events. And usually I can cheat my way into a win against Jonah. He's kind of younger and uh, thinks whoa, that I won't, I won't cheat, but I will. So he just doesn't pay attention. Were you, what were you saying? Are you, you excuse me, what? <laughs> cheat oh, cheat was, your way in? Yeah, Come usually, on, you I usually lie to Jonah and I cheat. I'll be like, no, this figure's got, uh, can't be psychic blasted. And he's just like, oh, well, Simeon wouldn't lie to me. And I'm like, no, Jonah, I wouldn't. That makes and sense. He he's just, a pretty yeah. dull, dull, little stupid idiot child. So, <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> sorry, Jonah. No, he's really not. He's he's actually a uh, very actually capable really, hero clicks player. He's, he's very smart. Uh, uh, but in case typically, he's throw that out there. In, uh, in previous uh, events, this isn't like the first time where top eight, it was me and Jonah like first off. So in, in previous events, it would come down to like us in top eight. And then, uh, I think I've beaten him a few times, but, uh, anyhow, I no, I don't, I don't try and cheat. I might accidentally do it, but that was a joke. Uh, but anyhow, he was playing four Wendigos, three tri Sentinels, a Sheriff strange and a, an Alex Wilder and a doppelganger prime who apparently has mystical, which I didn't really care about doppelganger prime. So that's interesting to me. Um, but it was a pretty interesting matchup. It would have been way more interesting had we not gone on ancient hold, which is real bad for line of fire. And it's real bad to go against tri sentinels on that map because of the all free destroy blocking within three and ping damage. Um, I was kind of able to like move up, but not as fast as I wanted to. And I kind of got stuck in like a poor position. Uh, although like typical in typical fashion, uh, how I always beat Jonah, what happened right off the bat was he moved a Wendigo in to attack me in his first attack against Alicia masters, who has a 14 defense and he had a 12 attack. He needed a three to hit, and he crit missed with the first attack. And then he hit one of the things. It was like Buzz or Chuck, whichever. He hit one of those, and they made their impervious roll. So I was up 15 points before I even engaged, and that was pretty fun. Um, He ended up uh, beating me pretty handily, though. His doppelganger with the ability to... Almost like Vulture, charge Flurry, and then charge Flurry again. It's not quite as busted as uh, Vulture because it's like once per turn, I believe. So with that effect, he was able to actually like whittle most of my characters down. He got rid of Franklin first and then without power cosmic, uh, Alex Wilder was much harder to choose powers for. And also the strategy of making my opponent miss by having really high defenses worked against me quite a bit because he was able to bring in 
almost all of the uh, trouble alerts. <laughs> like he, every turn, he was uh, he had at least three misses. So I don't think there was a turn where he couldn't bring in a trouble alert if he didn't want to. Uh, he also managed to crit miss with a second Wendigo. So I got thirty points just from him rolling bad. And then and I managed course, to punch that's, that's a tricycle. So those are those crit misses can be credited to none other than uh, the ROC yes. uh, for those crit misses. Thank you so much for making us use your awful dice. Yeah. Um, uh, thank you for holding the tournament. I love the state tournament. Your dice, however, are terrible. It's uh, also anyway. as far as rock dice go, they are my least favorite color scheme. These ones were bad. Oh, they were bad. Um, Look, folks, what they looked like. Yeah, I I prefer the swirly effects if you're gonna do anything. But yeah, just like plain white with like red dots was like too candy cane looking. Is I I don't know. I'm not an artist, but I didn't care for him. Uh, but I managed to take out a tri sentinel, and then he managed to take out the rest of my team. Um, I think time actually got called, but he was he was way ahead in points. I had sixty points, thirty from him just crit missing. Chris crit missing me and then uh, 30 from taking out a tri sentinel. He still had uh, his doppelganger was like almost dead, but his sheriff strange was still full dial. Alex, Alex Wilder was still full dial. Um, and then of course the other single click stuff, but yeah, he played it really well. He uh, put me on a map that, I mean, I assume he was going to go to that map either way but that map just really worked against me because I really need to have line of fire for TK. Um, it was like a plus 10 theme team and I was only a plus five. So yeah, it was a good match though. It was, there was a few times where I really thought I had it and doppelganger would just make one roll out. Cause I could only outwit either shape change or his super sense defense power. And so I kept going for the super sense one but he kept making shape change and then I'd go for shape change and he'd make the super senses. And I was just like, ugh. but yeah, it ended up being a, a really close game uh, up until like the last 10 minutes where he just had it in the bag, but I enjoyed it. All right. Well, right on. I'll go into my team really quickly. I had been uh, practicing the heck out of this team. It is three super scrolls, Josiah X, Spider-Man 1776, so that's 250 points. Then we fill it out with Mary Jane, the new common, and then uh, some objects and stuff that they kind of need for scrolling around. So I have the Remaker Ring. I normally put that on 1776. The Exo Specs I give to one of the Super Scrolls, the Soul Gem. Uh, to be honest you, I just kind of threw it on there to fill out points, and I thought it was pretty good to give to a Super Scroll. If he gets knocked off his first click with his Shape Change, he can heal up. But it only, it literally only came in handy once that entire day. Um, and that was the plus one defense. So not even like the reason I had it on there for, which was sad. Um, and then the five point map bonus for the Iron Avengers. And it's also a good map for me to be on. So I gave that to Josiah X so he could sit in the back safely away from the fray and make Iron Avengers. Uh, most of the games went really well. I've practiced a lot with this team. I'm not necessarily great with it. Uh, honestly, right up until I sat down, I wanted to try to switch it out for a team build that could include the super rare Captain Marvel from the Captain America set. I was like, man, I have to go against Wendigos, Tri Sentinels. Like, it would be just so great to go boop, delete you from life, you know, or like whatever. Or if I have to play against like a Black Widow, I can try to ping her. Uh, miss with Captain Marvel, flurry twice, miss or hit with Chewy, bring in um, whoever, uh, Black Vulcan, and then do that or something. Or, you know, if I hit, I hit, and that's great. And then Chewy can maybe kill Captain Marvel, you know, Black Widow, try to instantly get rid of her tokens. Like, I was just worried about all these matchups. And I didn't ha end up having those matchups that day against a Black Widow or a heavy, heavy Tri Sentinel team. I played against one Tri Sentinel that day. Um, so I was three and one going out of Swiss. That was fine. I felt pretty good. Uh, and then in top eight, played against Ian, fan of the show, gave us a lot of good feedback for the podcast. Really enjoys Thursday Throwdown and everything. So we really, really appreciate the support. Uh, and great player. Played him a few times in South Dakota States, and then a few times in Omaha. They've, they've like, traveled down to Omaha and stuff. So his team was a 
Ultra build with Magneto and Valeria with spin rings, so all that placement stuff. And also had Jason Wingard, who so was kind of like a little bit of everything, uh, type of a multiple win conditions style build. So I actually beat him in Swiss, but I made a pretty bad mistake uh, going in. So in Swiss, I had some great luck, right? I was able to make, so he had Mr. Oz on his team, and then I was able to make a Bolt bystander, uh, like second turn or something with Josiah, perplexed up Bolt's attack value, ran him just like right up, and was able to kill uh, Mr. Oz. Like he probed it once, probed it twice. I hit like a seven, I needed, I think, both times. Did miss this six on Super Senses, instantly got rid of like Mr. Oz, which was insane in the first game. So very lucky. Like if you can get lucky with the Scrolls team, and it's all about luck. So to talk about Scrolls, I guess a little bit before I go into more ma- about the matchup. Um, they can choose Mr. Fantastic, Invisible Woman, The Thing, or Human Torch. Each one of those members of the Fantastic Four gives them powers. Um, Thing gives them Impervious. And then Mr. Fantastic gives them Super Senses, as well as like other stuff. So Thing gives Impervious, uh, Close Combat Expert in Charge. Mr. Fantastic gives you Super Senses, Plasticity, and Giant Reach 4, which is awesome. Uh, Human Torch gives you 6 range, Running Shot, Energy Explosion. Invisible Girl gives you Sidestep, Stealth, Barrier as free, but only to make one marker. These are all good options. You can choose two at a time. So once I got into the thick of, you know, when I'm going upward, up to it, I would always choose the Thing and then Invisible Girl so I can barrier up and also be defensive just in case. And when I got in the thick of it, if it made sense for me to use Running Shot to get there, uh, same thing with the Exospecs guy. If I wanted to running shot and then also pulse wave or something, which is pretty much the main reason Exospecs were on there or precision strike, I could do that. And then, but really when we were in the thick of it, it was Mr. Fantastic and the thing. That way we have shape change on a four through six. We have super senses and then we have impervious. So just and three rollouts is awesome. can't be, uh, can't, can't be penetrated. Uh, penetr- yeah. Right, so that's the whole point of Josiah X on the team. I've talked about him before. I love Josiah X. He's one of my favorite characters of all time. His special damage power is Josiah X and friendly characters that share a keyword or adjacent friendly characters cannot be dealt penetrating damage, which is huge. Like that is probably like the biggest part of this team is that you can't deal me penetrating damage. It makes those four click scrolls uh, feel like your dial is crazy long. It's awesome. So it, really does. it, may, it makes it so if you don't one shot them, it's incredibly hard to like get all the way through their dial because they're almost always going to have at least two rollouts, and sometimes it's you know impervious that can reduce damage to zero. So right. So the whole team is because I really hate ping damage. It's super annoying. I don't like the fact that you can just be like bip 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 bip. I didn't make any attacks. Ha ha. So I'm like, you know what? You have to make attacks, and not only do you have to make attacks, I'm gonna have three rollouts on top of those uh, making an attack. So really enjoyed that stuff uh people can be like why didn't you play scroll general he's great for scrolls i just ended up with the way the points were and everything i wanted to be able to have pulse wave on the team and then paparazzi make it very easy to bring in trouble alerts and also make it very easy to like honestly if they somehow hit bring in troublemakers and same thing with like early equips right away um and obviously having autonomous on the team is huge for a meta that is defined right now i guess by 1776 so that's pretty big um but to go into me and ian's game a little bit i made a really terrible uh error right away and that was i made paparazzi when i didn't absolutely need to i literally just brought them out because his paparazzi had tokens and so i could in cap his other paparazzi to death not realizing uh you know because i i really haven't played against vulture a ton it's either i kill vulture like right away or he just kills me right away and it was very slow approach it was very much a positioning battle uh, both of our games really were and then with this one i really messed up i i gave him paparazzi to eat he was able to get two charges he was able to go all the way back to josiah x slap josiah x off of his damage power um, then i kind of made a retreat uh killed uh vulture the next turn and then it was really it was really downhill from there i thought you know maybe there's still a chance the points are pretty even right now let's see what can happen but once valeria and magneto were able to just go ping 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 it's it sucks and that's how they got rid of 1776 uh, and then once a team that has a lot going on for it like i said has jason has valeria magneto you know um 
all this stuff, once they are allowed to have four actions, they can go, they can run amok. You know, there was a time, there's a very small point in the time in the match where he only had two actions and he moved once. And he's like, I'm going to move with Jason, drop a pog. And I'm like, you can't, I mean, you can, but the pog can't do anything, even if it's autonomous, because once again, 1776 was in six, all that jazz. So, like, that was really good defensively. But once they got rid of 1776 and then the ability uh, to ignore penetrating damage, it, really really hurts the team especially when they have all of that stuff going on so definitely in the future i'm gonna not throw out paparazzi <laughs> like a madman not uh, and let vulture get two defense. easy kills yeah. yeah yeah that was just and like as soon as i did it and i was like okay it's here you go i was like oh and like in my brain i'm like why did i do that good lord um Game, I was, I was definitely like, ah, oh, the game. This is, I just hated him. The game, like that sucks. Not that he's not a good player, because we had good back and forth even after that. Like, I went for uh, energy explosion on almost his entire team. Would have killed Magneto. Got me a, a lot more points and stuff. Missed the energy explosion twice with Super Scroll. In fact, I crit missed. So I'm like, ah, oh, come on, Rock Dice. So I'm like, you know what? I can bring in Vulcan. He can penetrating energy explosion me some doubles and then I, I could like totally swing the game and then of course vulcan missed this awful white no swirl red pit disgusting mcdonald's looking rock <laughs> dice <laughs> trash really it's jack in the box rock dice. But still they're so bad i i don't even feel bad about saying this to them but guys these were the worst dice you made terrible dice yeah design. out of the Stop. like several because years and several because I mean, they make multiples per year uh, these are definitely my least favorite. Yeah, they're just yikes. Yikes, guys. But that was so, like me and Simi said, we both got beat out in top eight. Um, and that's just kind of the way it was. I ran a Supernova side tournament. This was a little more salt in the mood. Um, but I ran a Supernova side tournament because we were at a hotel, right? So there's no side tournaments that anyone could have. And I buy a lot of Supernova. In fact, I just got four bricks or whatever it is of supernova 48 something packs of supernova in from this ebay seller that i buy all my supernova from and you know lucas and everybody was kind of saying like oh dude why would you even buy supernova you're never gonna get a zombie they're all repacked blah 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 and i'm like i trust this ebay guy you know i i'll just assume you know it had original whiz kids tape on it and he's like oh who yeah it's so hard to get whiz kids tape and i was like don't 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 doubt me lucas don't doubt me man don't doubt me mr ringo star uh, so I, I get a found out that the seller was very reputable because the boosters, I sold the boosters for five bucks. We did a sealed tournament, um, open two boosters and I let them buy as much as they wanted for supernova. The winner got the map of supernova that was in there. And then like some other stuff, I, I brought some objects and other things. Uh, but sure enough, one of the people there, uh, old Colonel America. And it, it hurt me a little bit on the inside that I had, I've been chasing zombies for so long that someone else pulled it but it was also good because you know what i already have colonel america and this version of colonel america means a lot to me uh with how it was given to me so i was glad that somebody else pulled the zombie you know i didn't need two colonel americas i probably would have just given it away anyway so i, I was happy that he pulled it um it hurt a little i'm not gonna lie i hurt a little bit i was like man i've been chasing zombies for however long at the very least it was it was colonel america if it would have been hulk or wolverine like a zombie i needed it would have hurt me a lot uh, but that is fine. And we just had a good time. You know, it's like that was just another thing that happened that day. Uh, let's do really quick. Congratulations to Isaac Dinky, member of Phoenix Nest. And I would I would say man, man of his own team building. He always has really good kind of out of the box teams. Yeah. You no, know? I don't I, know. Do you I remember what in, oh, yeah, he did? I okay. in Swiss. Uh, he also, I think last year played a monster team with dweller in the darkness which was such yeah. like a a strange choice to me i was like huh like i don't remember him doing anything like super crazy but like he managed to build around it really well uh so this time he was doing a it was a spider-man family theme team with robots so it was penny parker um the prime mag well, unique magneto and sinister the danger room constructs let's see who is he porting around he had the amazo from justice league i think at the lower dial he had the cyclops sentinel at the lower dial and a tri sentinel and i think there's one thing that i'm missing in there uh probably like a mary jane i'm pretty sure because i know he made paparazzi at one point but and then he had a couple equipments that i can't exactly remember 
but uh, yeah, he he played it really well against me. Um, I basically, I mean, he won map and put me on hedge maze, and on hedge maze he could basically outrange me at any point, which really hurts Black Leopard. That means that like I can't do my uh, maximum uh, match my values kind of thing. So he was able to take out uh, most of my team from range. And then Magneto was able to pulse wave and force blast me into a bunch of walls and stuff. So he played it really well, and I'm absolutely not surprised that he won because uh, he's a very good player. Um, he was on part of the team that won Team Worlds. What did they do in uh, Team Worlds last year? In was it yeah, he did eight? win Team Worlds. No, I think he did win Team. Oh no, I know they got at I'm least top eight in Team Worlds, I but I don't they, remember. No, they came down to them in team worlds because i think like the last game was micah love versus george masu but i don't remember if isaac was on that team or not i know last year he won team nationals or rock nationals i guess not team nationals sorry but rock nationals they won for sure i guess it would just be rock whatever they won rock teams and i don't remember if he won team World. i don't I feel bad yeah i don't think so now that i'm thinking back but he definitely got like top eight uh, with him right. and Good. it was him running like Nimrod. I think Lucas was running 300 point juggernaut and then some other, some other person that like hadn't played in a while. They said like he was fairly yeah. new or something. So yeah, Isaac's definitely no slouch when it comes to both team building and uh, experience with the game. So right. And that brings pretty much our state adventure to a close. So kind of like we said earlier, it was at a hotel, um, the extra pricing was because we had to pay for the conference room, but for some reason it came with like catered food. Uh, Simeon, give us a, a deep food review of, of what we had there. So this will explain why all our build sheets say Alfredo or Marinara on the side of them. If anyone was wondering, oh, yeah, yeah. this is why. I'm not, I'm not a food critic by any means, but uh, I, would, uh, I would describe the food, and I'm not uh, disparaging the hotel by any means. It was a very nice hotel. Um, it just seemed like very mass produced kind of quality. Uh, so I would describe it as, I'd say like microwave dinner quality noodles and sauce with actual like grilled chicken placed on top. And then a breadstick that, uh, you wouldn't write home to your mom about, but you could probably like beat her to death with it or something. I don't know. It was <laughs> not a great breadstick. And um, you know what the worst part was? When we looked into those containers, they had like clear tops. We we're like, oh, wow, we get a breadstick too? Wow. And <laughs> and then it was instant disappointment. Uh, yeah. Nothing really beats Fazoli's breadsticks, though. Uh, those endless Whoa, breadsticks. Well, I'm sorry. I'm kind of a Olive Garden stan. I've never been to Fazoli's. Oh, wow. but like, Clearly, if you pick Olive Whoa. Garden over Fazoli's, you've clearly never been there. I have never been to Fazoli's, but Olive Garden slaps, bro. I love Olive Garden. Mm. Uh, no, it, it honestly wasn't, like, awful. I almost did die from choking on a piece of chicken that was, like, rather large when I finally coughed it out of my lung, which is super fun when you're choking in public while wearing a mask and you have to start coughing, like, violently. It's a really fun thing to do nowadays. Weird so I'm glad looks. that happened to me. I wasn't at all, like, self-conscious about that, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it was, uh, I don't know. It, oh, was, I get it was definitely better than, like, uh, my meal from the previous night, which was campfire hot dogs. So it was mm. an improvement on that, but only only slightly. I really do enjoy campfire hot dogs. These by any chance, like, hot dogs that were, like, used Twinkies as a bun and then Cheese Whiz on top? No. Cheese hot dogs? No. I'm not going to take Cheese Whiz and Twinkies camping. Man, if you ever want some of that big city saturated disgustingness, oh, chemical plant made, you're just describing a tornado now. Uh, no, <laughs> I, yeah, it's just uh, like the Sam's Club beef franks or whatever on a bun with ketchup and mustard. And I had like three well, of them. Getting, we're, we're a hero clicks podcast, we've talked about food for the last nope, like you three. Turned me into a food critic, Calder. You did this to food me. Critics. Oh, sure. Uh, let's go ahead. I guess really we could also end states with saying what figures did you end up from the draft pool? What fig So number one, what figures were you hoping you could get that day? And then which ones did you end up with from the Chase Prime sets of Rebirth and Earth X? 
Oh, I mean, I definitely would have taken the Captain Marvel from Earth X or the uh, Venom Captain America just because it'd be really easy. I already have both and it'd be really easy to trade them for stuff. I'm not super interested in the Venom chases. I know that like now that there's the Venom verse thing, you can use them with that. But I guess like the Venom Spider-Man would have been my not obvious choice from Earth X. And then from Rebirth, um, it would have been Batman Who Laughs because that's the hardest. I found that's like the hardest one to get for some reason. And then Mm -hmm. after him, it would have been like Red Death. But what I ended up getting was the Merciless, which is the Ares armor Batman from uh, the Dark Knight series. And from Earth X, I got the Venom Rocket Raccoon, which I actually pulled in a sealed once. And he's 100 points, and I learned quickly into that sealed like event that he was a bad 100 points. Ooh. But now I have him. He's a good sculpt, so I'll keep him for that. Sweet. I So going into it, I have every single EarthX keyworded figure, except for that Captain Marvel. Um, he hasn't really eluded me. I've, I've literally pulled him before, but I also instantly sold him that day for some quick cash. Um, because it was an Earth X like sealed WKO. So my goal today was like a determine entry, get Captain Marvel for $45 and whatever the second figure I get is. So like that's what I really, really wanted. So kind of the bummer thing was obviously got beat out in top eight. I, I practiced this team so much because I, I really wanted that Captain Marvel, but that's okay. Um the second figure I wanted was the super rare prime bizarro. Because I like Superman villains a lot. I like this version of Bizarro because he was in that awesome... Uh, this one is technically his Outsiders version, which I don't care about. But this is still the same Bizarro that is uh, Lex Luthor's clone of Superman that he makes in the New 52 world. Like I think it's still somewhat based around that Bizarro. So I just wanted a, another Bizarro. And I think for 125 points, he's pretty solid. So, you know, I just wanted the new updated Bizarro. And I ended up getting him. So I got uh, Bizarro and the super rare prime spider woman from earth x so double super rare primed it up and had a good time so i ended up with one of the figures i wanted so i really couldn't complain too much about the seal tournament also or i guess about states also i brought my sister along i just wanted to have her play in a tournament see what it was like and she had an insanely fun day uh the entire car ride back she was like wow i thought i was gonna get made fun of for not knowing the game very well i thought all your friends were jerks or whatever. And she was like, they were all so nice. Like, no, that's me. just me. I'm the- <laughs> I'm not. No, how dare you? you I'm, did beat I'm her, like, the though, nice. like a mean, mean man. Who did you? Who did you, Simeon? Oh, that's true. Um, I forgot that. Yeah. Go down, buddy. <laughs> so let's watch it there. She, I, no. I legitimately at one point in my game with her. Um, so I was like helping her quite a bit, but it's not like I was like letting her win by any means i legitimately at one point was like i'm not gonna be able to take down 275 point nimrod i was like oh, yeah. this really so, is hard so for everybody uh that wants to know i was like sis all you have to do if you don't make any attacks it's fine all you have to do is roll your dice higher than them so i was like this is nimrod this is the wwe ring i was like and the, the car right up i was just like you just move into it you stay there and you re-roll their ranged attacks once per turn. You re-roll your close attacks once per turn and you're good. All right. I'm going to give you a map bonus to fill out points. That way you're not severely underbuilt. It doesn't matter because I want you to give up as little points as anyway. So that way they have to kill all of Nimrod in order to even uh, beat you. You know, I, I thought for a new player strategy, she had literally played like once two years ago and I, I talked to her, I guess about it all the time. Um, but like for having her like learn basically hero clicks the night before and then on the ride up and then we p- played a practice game, I guess, before the tournament, um, she had a really fun time. And I, I really thought like Nimrod gives you just like the best chance of like, oh, I won by sheer luck. Like you didn't have pulse wave and I just sort of made shape changes and rolled higher than you. So haha, I, yeah. I win. Was, like I, I just thought Nimrod is just the easiest thing for a new person to pilot, and then it also gives them the highest chance of winning. And uh, she really enjoyed it. My Valeria and Franklin both killed themselves while attacking Nimrod. Um, oh, yeah. That was like really rough. 
Wolverine like also killed himself, but like he went on the card instead. Right. And yeah, he's then she poisoned him to death when he came back off the card. So Ooh, what I was a just sack. like this is awful. <laughs> like I'm gonna lose. If she would have beat you, uh she would probably never one, she would never let it down. I probably wouldn't have let it let it go either. I would have never, never oh yeah, no, never. I would have I would have talked about it all the time. But yeah, yeah. she had that a great was my time. Main concern, so, yeah. Called her being this goes out to in front of me, yeah. Yeah. Um No, everybody had a really fun team. Uh what was your favorite team? I was and I know this podcast is super long, guys. Sorry. What was your favorite team that you didn't play that was ran that day, Simeon? Uh my favorite team that I didn't play. Uh, I'm trying to it's think. Like, is probably cool the one that, one that beat you in top eight. Uh, the okay. Wingard Vulture. Just tree. saying that. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying that because that beat you. Yeah. Right. Uh, no, uh, I think it was Mike. I want to say Mike, but I'm not 100% sure. Because um, I didn't play him. But uh, he was running an Arno Stark Dark Side, and there's some other little piece on there. And I can't remember what it was now. But it just seemed like a really fun team. Arno Stark is a figure that I've always really wanted to like try and make a team with, but I just haven't. Right. So I'm, I was of two minds of this. Right away, I was like, boom. Happy little hero clicks. Devin Adams made a freaking... Uh, just just showed up, and he was like 300-point God Emperor Doom. Yep. Go with it. <laughs> I love that. But it, I guess it has to go to Blake Craig because he played a Frightful 4 theme team, a wife swap Frightful 4. I don't know what you would call it, I guess, for Frightful 4, but in a Frightful 4 theme team, and I think that's awesome. And I think if he would have had Super Scrolls on his Frightful 4 theme team, he probably would have done better instead of losing all of his games that day. But still, he brought a Frightful 4 theme team, and I thought that was awesome. So but, uh, I'm going to go with Blake. He did great. He's a cool yeah. guy. I would have said right. Evan, but I played against him first round. After traveling oh. with him for two and a half hours, we got there and uh, got paired first round. So that was fun. Mm -hmm. Turns out Black Leopard turns God Emperor Doom into like silly putty. So mm. it's kind of sad. I feel bad for Devin a little bit for, <laughs> for, for just having to play against number one, someone yeah. he traveled with, number two, someone who was like, oh, your stats are a 10, 17, 3. Yeah, it was oh. literally like the best counter, like not even touching his power cosmic or trying to outwit him or anything. It was literally the best counter. It was like, hey, those really awesome stats and that perplex you have, I can just make that all go away. You don't mean a thing, bro. Uh, yeah. So that's states, guys. See me have anything else to add on states? Otherwise, we can wrap up the show. Nope. Uh, big thank you to Lucas for running it and uh, for finding us a venue and uh, all that stuff. Is yeah, I mean, he undertook more than normal just for the love of the game or whatever he Absolutely. does it for i don't really know what i don't know what he does it for i wouldn't have done it that's why i'm not a judge g simian right well as a reminder guys you can get check out dialies for hero clicks at gmail.com if you want to send us an email or write in some questions you can also send us uh straight DMs or check out our community Tuesdays question on Facebook and Twitter. Twitter is at Dial H4. It's the number four hero clicks, Facebook.com slash Dial H for Hero Clicks. Uh, YouTube, Thursday throwdown this week. Avengers Assembled versus Just League Trinity War. Very excited for this one. Really good figures in both sets. Uh, if you want to vote, you can still find those on our Discord if you support us on Patreon and then on our Facebook and our Twitter to vote those. And you can also just do it on our YouTube channel. In the comment section of the last Thursday Throwdown video. So check us out at youtube.com slash dialect for I also have a mail call video up there, which I think is pretty fun. I'm going to try to do as many unboxings and stuff as I can. I Means, excuse me, Simeon are also going to be making a ton of videos coming soon. And we're going to be able to release those kind of in succession or, you know, split, sprinkled throughout the rest of the year. So you definitely want to be watching our YouTube channel for the awesome content we're going to make besides our normal awesome content that is like Thursday throw it on on tabletop simulator and everything. So that is my shout outs. If you guys want to get someone into listening to the podcast, make sure uh, you send them our way. We have the new clicks on the block episode for new players and all sorts of beautiful podcasty goodness. So thank you guys so much for listening. Simeon. I want to go ahead and read us out of here. Yeah. So with that, not going to keep you any longer. Uh, we are sponsored by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Heroclix singles and sealed products. So check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Be trails. <laughs>
my, my, my staff.